Hello, I'm MC Tune, the worst rapper in the world. Today we've got uh, a special one. It's always special, isn't it? We've got um, Kyle Adams from the, uh, Professor Kyle Adams, as he has said, from the Flat Earth Institute of Science. How are you doing, Kyle? Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks for having, uh, for coming on. I've got a couple things to just talk about quick. Let me move this. So, um, if you've not seen the Mark Steele video that I did last week, uh, where Mark Steele, he, he's Mark Steele is an, uh, uh, an anti 5g scammer. And, uh, he, we trolled him. We, we sent him some fake documents that were completely garbage. Nobody that knew anything about uh, 5G or electronics or anything would have believed them. And he believed them and put videos on them. And there were some secret hidden messages in the documents. And he still put them on screen and everything. Anyway, the link's in the description. Uh, or you can just find um, Mark Steele trolls himself. Um, <clears throat> so make sure that you, uh, if this is your first time here, go ahead and click the subscribe and the, the bell notification. Um and yeah, I'll let you decide if you want the thumbs up or thumbs down. So let's see one more thing. Um, now, a lot of people have have sent me their condolences that tab Coca-Cola has announced they will no longer be producing tab. Um, it's just water. I rinse it out. I have it. You know, it's just every time it's the same stuff. Um, but don't tell Red Fail Philosophy. Let him think that I still have it. So, all right. And then one final thing. Kyle is a super nice guy, as um, far as I can tell. And uh, he comes with the highest recommendations from Mr. Sensible on his his uh, demeanor. So super chats, uh, please keep them matching Kyle's demeanor. I'd appreciate that. And I think he would, too. So I there appreciate we that. go. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, Kyle, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Hi, I'm Kyle. Uh, Kyle Adams. I teach in the Flat Earth Institute of Science. I've been doing so for about a year now, maybe something like that. I don't know. I've been doing that and I come out with a new video about every week. I also do the Flat Earth News and just report on the most influential Flat Earthers that I can find. And I have uh, got about 15 of them that I really kind of report on their growth every week or every two weeks about that's when I do those. Uh, and yeah, I just really enjoy this stuff. I'm very passionate about it. Okay. Um, now, you, you're, are you aware that Flat Earth News has been going for, I think, well over two years from a guy named Planer Walk? I haven't heard of him. No? Okay. Well, he does that. Uh, he does it monthly. Um, oh, okay. He's from New Zealand. So you might you might look him up. Planer Walk, Flat Earth News. Or Flat Earth Noose. I actually have a, a shirt that says Flat Earth Noose from him. So, huh. uh, Is anyway. he a Flat Earther or an anti-Flat Earther? Oh, he's not a Flat Earther, no. Oh, okay. So, okay. So very different. Very different <laughs> perspective. Um, <clears throat> so you are a... Um, <laughs> we've got some questions already. Uh, we, You are a professor at the... Um, Flat Earth Institute Flat Earth. of Science. So is that um, is that associated with the Flat Earth Community University? No. Are you? Yeah. You don't do any like cross anything with the Flat Earth Community University? There's the Flat Earth University on Facebook, and I'm a part of that group on Facebook, and I just share my stuff with them, but no one oh. from that university has really contacted me. That's, or no, that's not the one. That, the, 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 there's a different one, FECU, Flat Earth Community University. It was star uh, started by Flat Out. He's the dean of students. Uh -huh. um, well, is this a YouTube channel? Or yeah, is it yeah. A well, uh, Flat Out is a YouTube, has a YouTube channel, and uh, the Flat Earth, Flat Earth Community University FECU is also um, is also a channel on their own on uh, Thank Facebook. Thank you. Let me know about it. I haven't heard of it. So, so. yeah, yeah I'm always looking for people to collaborate with, and I would love it if so, if you could send someone to contact me, and we could work together. Uh, to well, flat out has. I think he's he spends all of his time researching now, and he's he's basically not doing any new videos for quite a while. So uh, maybe oh. maybe people could find him flat out, not flat out hero, flat out. And um, I encourage him to do some more videos. So uh, that would be 
Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, the, the, the abbreviation is, is FECU, F-E-C-U. So the, mm -hmm. um, all right. So we've got a uh, nerd angle asked, um, is the, the, um, what do you call it? Flat Earth Institute of Science an accredited institution? No, no, it's not accredited. No, no accreditation. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, got that check. So what about like the athletics? at the Flat Earth Institute of Science. Is it a is it big? Do you have any ball spinning ball sports or do you strictly stick to disc based sports, you know, like this kind. <laughs> um any any uh, athletics there? No, no, no. just no. what's we the have an, what's um, the mascot? Uh, we don't have a mascot or you anything know, oh. like that. Fecu, uh, Fecu just... has the flurfers, the Fecu flurfers. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we just have our. It's an online thing we're trying to do, like uh, Khan Academy. I'm, I don't know if you've heard of Khan Academy, K H N. Oh yes. Yeah, and so uh, we're just trying to do a free online school, and uh, I'm always looking for collaborators to work with us uh, and organizing and contributing to different things. Um. I'm trying to work a lot more these days with the Globe Busters and with the Flat Earth Clock app. Uh, there's a lot of great content that comes out from there all the time. And uh, those are the people who I've really been working with the most lately. So Dearth? You do stuff with... D-I-T-R-H. Ah, oh, we call him Dearth. Don't you call him yeah, Dearth? Yeah, I used to call I him mean, you, you can't I not. you can't not call him Dearth. Come on. I, I've done it. I've, I'm guilty of that. I've called him that before. Yeah. And then someone corrected me like, oh, wow. So, yeah. And so, I, yeah, if it's not D-I-T-R-H, I just call him, you know, David Weiss. <laughs> yeah. I like Dearth. Um, so, <laughs> Big guy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Stringer News 1 is saying you, you neglected to talk about your teaching credential. So we kind of missed that. Uh, what degrees do you hold and what in and what is the Accreditation Academy? All right. Our agency. I got... Okay. Uh, in order to become a professor, you really don't need any kind of degrees or anything like that. You just have to be someone who teaches something, someone who professes their beliefs. Uh, and that's the only thing that you need for to, to be a professor. However, uh, nonetheless, I did go to Dixie State University. I have a bachelor's degree in science with an emphasis in art. And uh, some of that kind of comes out in my videos every every now and then. So a bachelor's in science. What what's the bachelor's in specifically? It, it says my my degree says bachelor's of science with an emphasis in art. That sounds like more of a bachelor's of art. Got to be honest. Yeah, that, it says well, OK, if you really want to understand that, you need to open up the dictionary to what science means. And when you open up the dictionary, it just says uh, a group of a select of I, I've got to open up the dictionary so I could just read it to you. So it's a little. Can you still see me? Yeah. All right. Cool. So I like to go by the book on that one. OK, the definition of science is the systematic knowledge of the physical or material world gained through observation and, ex and experimentation. And so when it comes to the science of art, it is the systematic knowledge of the physical world in art, or, you know, it's very material. It's as hands-on as you get. Okay. And uh, yeah. And so it's all, it's totally systematized knowledge on that. Uh, and so there's a lot of other things too, in order to get a bachelor's degree, uh, you know, of science in art, you have to take, physics, you have to take math, you have to take, uh, I took ornithology, I took geography, I took you So know, you, so you did something. take physics and math classes? I did. Okay. I did. Okay. Those are required. You, you can't graduate without physics and math and geography and all these other general things that, in order to do it. And so Dixie State University is a state university. It is very much accredited. And yeah, but I don't really pull off of all that because I'm not really all about making appeals to authority. I don't present myself as an authority figure well, unless we're talking. About but you, you do say you're from, you're a professor. I, I do say I'm a professor by the dictionary, so, and, which is someone who teaches and someone who professes their beliefs. So, well, 
when you say professor, that's uh-huh. a title, right? They're not. Yes. People don't take that to mean an adjective, right? An uh-huh. adjective would be a person that professes. They mean it to. They take it to mean a title. So it is a bit of an appeal to authority to call yourself a professor, right? I don't. Oh, okay. I don't put my title in front than... when I okay. say things, right? All right. Well, any more than just being a teacher. I'm. I'm teaching a classroom here. And so, uh, and that was one of the de- definitions of professor is someone, a teacher in a institution of some sort. I can pull out the exact definition for you on that as well here. Yeah. Um, a professor, a teacher of the highest academic rank in a college or university who has been awarded the title professor in a particular branch of learning. Okay, that's one definition. So awarded. Of, you know, that's Number two is earned. any teacher who has the rank of professor. And so, yeah, in the Flat Earth Institute of Science, I am a professor. I am the highest ranking and person who, in the Flat Earth Institute of Science. Who, who awarded that to you? What's that? Who awarded that to you? Who awarded it to me? Well, as kind of the founder of the institution, that would be me. So oh. I, I don't know, maybe I'm more of a dean, but I don't know. I, okay. I just teach. D- dean of, yeah, all right. Um, so yeah, how many, all right, let's see, we've got a couple other questions. Uh, let's see, we got that one. We got that one. We got, I'm saving them here. So, uh, NANA for $6 and 66 cents, hail Santa, uh, says flat earth science and then LMFAO and four laughy faces. So okay, he he wasn't uh, uh, N A N A is not too impressed yet. Maybe just that's okay. Maybe he will you know, be shortly. I don't expect anyone to you know, or I don't expect sorry, I don't expect everyone to be very impressed by that. And a lot of people just watch my channel just for giggles. You know, they think it's funny, and that's okay. You know, uh, yeah, I, at least I they're agree. watching. Um, so let's see. Uh, Oh, this is a good one from C4 <laughs> says, Kyle, the earth is not flat, but you can grow one hell of a neck beard. So at least you've got that going for you. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, I, you, you may you may catch on that. I have a lot of nerds in the in my group here. So um, let's see. We've got uh, nerd angle says or you could just be honest and explain you don't have credentials because you don't and you aren't a professor because you aren't that's his uh what he has to say there i there's a lot of people who feel that way yep yeah i just advise read the dictionary that's it (laughs) yep all right so are you do you know jm truth uh jm truth uh, the name rings a bell i i think uh just just now saeed Saeed Ahmad said, hey, genius, are you a modified professor like J.M. Truth? I, I'm not. I don't know J.M. Truth very well. No, I think I'm on my list of people I, I follow, but uh, I don't know that like the full list of people who are after the the top 15 to 17 right now. It goes on to like 40 or something like that. So when you're tracking 40 people, it can it can be kind of tough. Yeah, he's not in the top 40. Uh, he's not the top thousand he's but uh nathan thompson you probably know him nathan thompson brought him in as a uh, as a appeal to authority so uh-huh but uh didn't go well for him yeah so. i don't i don't like to make appeals to authority i like to present the evidence and say you know here it is and take a look for yourself yeah okay well um, let's see um let's see i'm wondering now now you said it was online but i want a question i have uh, are the dorms nice <laughs> oh, both over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, and then, final on the the Institute of Science. Is there a large endowment? Endowment? Yes. As in, like a lot of money behind it? Yeah. No. Hmm. No. Yeah. Probably, probably something to I look been into. You could, you could ask. Paying money out. You could times. ask that guy that. Um, that spent the twenty thousand dollars on uh, for Bob Nodell to uh-huh. to measure the rotation of the Earth, and they measured the fifteen degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Um, you could ask him 
to start an endowment. That might be nice. Hmm, that'd be cool. Now, if you contacts me, I, I wouldn't reject money if they send it my way. We got a few thanks, Bob's in the in the chat here. So, um, let's see. <laughs> Somebody sent me. No, oh, okay. People contact me a lot. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, why don't you? Um, I'm sure you have a lot of things that you present in your classes. Do you want to maybe um, go over something? Uh, can I share screen or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Let me hold on. I it's I have to. The default settings in Zoom don't allow that, but I will make that change. And while I'm doing that, what does your shirt say? Oh, it says Truck Norris. It's just a Maverick uh, gas station <laughs> T-shirt. It says, uh, Truck Norris did a donut once, and it made the Grand Canyon. <laughs> I, I love Chuck Norris, man. That's. Do you know, I, I was, this summer we went out to, uh, to South Dakota and we saw Mount Rushmore. They were going to put Chuck Norris on Mount Rushmore, <laughs> but the granite was not hard enough for his beard. <laughs> so... All right. Uh, yeah, you can you can share screen now. I can share screen now. Is there a button somewhere? I'm not familiar with Zoom. Um, as well did as my you kids. did you install the client? No, I, I don't. Well, I don't know. Maybe my t kids do. I know my kids do school with all the time on. Well, on is Zoom. is the app you're running Zoom or is the app you're running Chrome? Uh, it says the Zoom app. All right. So then on the bottom center it should say there should be something when you move your mouse over it it should say uh share screen exit minimize oh i see it now okay let me get the screen ready then uh come on. So let's see. <clears throat> While you're doing that, uh, I don't want to have uh, too much. I, I think I'm all set here. Oh, you're at? Right? Okay. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Share screen. All right. So can you see all this? Yes. All right, this is the, the mind map. I have this uh, open debate group here. This is where I go. Uh, totally public here and uh over here i have each of my lessons or i'm still working on uploading all of them uh to this debate group but i've got a lot of them here on youtube still open here i've got the entire course curriculum and so i've got my syllabus i've got lesson one right here and lesson one just starts off with uh the basic observation of flat horizons and so because we see a flat horizon, is it flat? And so that's where we start our question and we start to build off of that. I've read a lot of different uh, textbooks about with geography and uh, geology. And a lot of those textbooks, they often just make that blanket appeal to authority right at the very beginning. The earth is a globe and then they just move on and they don't back it up and say, why they think it's a globe or anything like that. And so this was where I'm really going through and, and being a little different here and saying, okay, we have the observation of flat horizons and we're gonna test that and we're going to uh, observe to see, is that horizon flat because it actually is flat or, uh, or is, is it actually curved? And so uh, all of lesson one here just focuses on uh, the horizon across the X axis. And then all of lesson two uh, starts observing the horizon across the Z axis kind of coming towards you there. And uh, so I'm not sure exactly which one you want to talk about those because uh, they're well, maybe, they both maybe the, the, curved the, the left to right, it. like the measurements of the left to right would be, that'd be good. Uh, the, the measurements from left to right, are you talking about the X axis here about, uh, about that kind of curvature? Um, well, I don't know which way you're, to, which, which axis is which I'm so, and when you're looking right. at the horizon, I say left to right. And so okay. you can name so any, any right axis, here, whatever you want, of course. Okay. So right here, just in our basic syllabus picture, 
we can see a horizon right there. And uh, it's totally horizontal. And so that's what I'm talking about on the x-axis is the horizontal horizon. Now, if we come down here into lesson two, there's the, the observation of the boat on the horizon. Oh, but, and well, as the boat appears- well, Yeah, let's stick with goes, one. Can we stick with one first though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, how did you quantify that there, the, the left to right flatness or curveness? Uh, how do I quantify the, how flat it looks? Yes. How do you quantify instead of qualify that? So you qualified that it looks flat. So you did, did you yeah. quantify that it measures flat? Uh, well, let's see in your video, or I actually featured one of your videos, uh, in here where I, I looked at, so I've got a whole bunch here. We talked about scrunched horizon. I believe that's one of your observations here where you looked at it with uh, a level, right? Uh, yeah, you, a straight edge, a straight edge. Yeah, you looked at it with the straight yeah, edge. It wasn't and, me. It was Rory. Uh, I just want to give credit Rory. where it's due. Rory did. It was on your, it was on your website. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he, MC Tune. I'm, I'm a rapper, you know. <laughs> MC Tune. Okay. MC Tune.net. And so in this video here, I went and observed that and I I looked at that and I noticed that on one side it looked completely flat, but on the other side it appeared to curve. And so there's some acknowledged curvature that we're seeing here. Uh -huh. And so uh, the whole video went in and asked, why are we seeing that? Is there an effect that is uh, causing it to do this? Why it should, if the earth were curved, it should be evenly curved it should, uh, on both sides. Does that make sense? So did you, did you quantify the amount of curve? Uh, or did you just qualify the amount of curve? So qu qualify no. would be, it appears flat or it appears curved or it appears this way. Quantify would be an actual measurement, right? Like somehow measuring so that you'd have some numbers behind whether it is, um, you know, curved or not okay so right here it's uh pointing out that we see some curvature it's not perfectly flat. we can take a straight edge to it and we can see that did i take a did i measure the angles of just how big of a curve that is no but i didn't really feel like that was really necessary well because well no what i'm i, I wouldn't uh, measure the obvious. angles so what i have done with this exact image is I have manually counted the number of pixels from the bottom straight edge to the horizon and the mm -hmm. and the top straight edge to the horizon all the way across the image in, in uh, I think, 10 pixel intervals, uh -huh. right? And then I put that into a spreadsheet and I did a second order polynomial line fit. Now that would be a, a quantification of the straightness or curvedness of the horizon. Okay. As so, a as a professor uh, at yeah. an institute of science, that's the kind of thing I would kind of expect to happen. Okay. This is a, a video that I'm really just itching to get, out and I'll I'll spoil it for you. Uh, I I, I watched it. You're not spoiling it for me, but the the audience. Oh maybe no, I hasn't. haven't released this video yet. This is a video. This is the 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 basis that I'm going to be uh, producing fairly soon here. Oh. All right. uh, okay. A lot of people like to say the term, show me the math. And I, I hear that all the time, show me the math. And they're looking for numbers for something that- Science, yeah, like that's pretty common in science. Obvious, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, with that, I just say, well, do numbers really always prove everything? And the answer is no, because when, uh, okay. People like to see complicated things, and uh, you know what is the square root of, you know, a great big long number, and uh, I'll I'll just simplify things here to get straight to the point. Okay, uh, just because two times two equals four doesn't mean uh, doesn't mean that a yardstick is four feet long. Does that make sense? And so well, they're not the related, math, so no, it doesn't make sense. It, the math just seeing a math equation doesn't prove it right, okay? You can have really fancy math equations, as, as fancy as you want, but that doesn't mean 
uh, it, it, what it really comes down to in the end is what I'm trying to say is that math equation has to measure up to what we see with reality. You, has, you have to be able to look at the yardstick as you're saying and say, and so with you, what you said is you took the, the pixels and you went and measured the pixels. And so that's measuring it with reality. And yeah. Yes. So a lot easier when I've actually produced the video because then I've worked out exactly the way I want to say it and I don't stutter all the time and I, all this other stuff. Yeah, I get it. So, yeah. all right. So let, let's go not to the, the curved horizon. Then how about the, the apparent straight horizon? Did you quantify the straightness of the apparent straight horizon? Uh, you mean just holding up a, uh, I, I, you did a straight line against it and that's, a, I it seem I'm getting lost on the whole well, point of it. I do it when there's a point to it. Yeah. So, that? so there's a point to it. Yeah. You're, so, so, so lesson one is, as far as I can tell, lesson one is the horizon appears flat. Yes. Okay. But now this is an institute of science, not an institute of appearances. So I would expect some quantification of the uh -huh. straightness or flatness of the horizon, not just it looks that way. Because if, okay. if because you can't build a building on it looks that way, right? You actually measure things when you build a building, right? No, okay. no engineer would say, just go, you know, I'm not going to tell you how long that wall is supposed to be. Just put, put a wall there. Uh -huh. Right. And then and then the, they, they would they would say that wall is going to be 10 feet long. And then the the person building that wall would say, oh, well, I'm going to have to go get my tape measure and put a wall that's 10 feet long there. Right. So you, okay. you can't just say just hand wave math away. Right. That that's an integral part of science. All right. So with this, we're just starting off the foundation. This is a small little bit to, to get you wondering, OK, well, it's there to ask questions. And so it's a ba very, really basic, simple observation. And I expect that to, to be able to speak for itself. Do I need to, to go out and measure this and say, okay, yeah, that is, you do. do I need to know the exact angle at which that is curved? Yes. No, because my whole purpose is saying that is curved or that isn't. And any kind of measurements after that are really <laughs> everybody, because I everybody in the chat is, is saying, yes, you do need to measure it. Why? <laughs> because it's science. <laughs> okay, so it depends on your end game. What is the end game here? To find if out the I truth. Curve, I don't need to measure to see that exactly how curved it is because it's irrelevant information. But you do need to measure it because if it if you Why? if it if the measurement, you, you know, and the measurement should have a margin of error analysis as well, right? So if it looks flat, then then you'd you'd say, well, what is the margin of error? of of the measurement that I do on it right because uh, obviously you can't count half pixels and sometimes if you look at pixels you have a couple pixels that you can choose from uh, when you're doing a measurement like on this one that you could have done um, and I know because I counted the pixels on that very picture um, I don't have them um, for that picture published but I do for a different picture which we can get into later so here, here, I did this in my video. I, that looks pretty flat right there. And when you really zoom in, it's really pixelated and it's hard to tell exactly where now, one well, thing ends well, and the other one begins. Yeah, this particular, but, that, but why, why did this particular image is very fuzzy. I mean, I have, I did the same thing on was, mine. Was tip, yeah, uh, that was what I got out of that. Did, so did you, you edit? Did you edit the, the one that I had on my website? Uh, did, did you watch the video or not? I uh, I got part I... way in when you started talking and making assertions about um, the um, the air, and I'm like, oh, that'll be interesting to hear. Okay, well, the whole thing here is if this was the curvature of the Earth we were looking at, and they're both scrunched <laughs> about the same uh, amount. Uh, we can look at this and say, okay, well, that lines up really well with the straight line. Okay, that's pretty flat to me, and that's just observation. Exactly. Yeah. It, how much it, measurement do you yeah. want me to put in there? Exactly. How do you count want to quantify? Count the pixels. How it's easy. Count the pixels from the top uh, straight edge to the horizon, and count the pixels from the bottom straight edge to the horizon. 
right? Okay. You every, want to do that right here? Because... Every certain number of pixels across, put them into a spreadsheet, and do a polynomial line fit. That's all I'm asking for. It's not that hard. Okay, because I'm looking at this and I'm not seeing any pixels between the two. Yeah, don't Maybe. don't use yeah. that image. You can download the original image straight off of Rory's iPhone that includes the EXIF uh -huh. information and the GPS coordinates it was taken. So this particular uh -huh. one is is not a good image to take it from. Take it from the actual uh, unmodified source image that's you can download right on the website there. Okay, so again, it comes down to the purpose of it because the whole purpose of it saying, look, I can see that it's straight on this side and I can see that there's it's curved on this side. And so why do I need to get a bunch of irrelevant information that doesn't Because if you did purpose? get that relevant information, you would find that it's curved on the right side as well. I did that. It's curved on the right side as well. Yeah. You're saying it's curved on this side? Are you saying it's the same amount of curvature on the on the right side as on the left? Yep. Because I did a poly though, I did a polynomial line fit. I'd like to see it. I'd yeah. love to see it do that cuz I I went and did both sides and it was very clearly uh, straight on one side yeah. and this image very... is this is really not the the best image to be looking at right because well i, I have other images on on the actual so, video so how did you how did you make that image well i took the image from the website and i shrunk both sides oh. of it okay so here i'll i can let me let me share to we you can, we can go through and do this again well yeah I, let me let me just share to you what what i did what i have on the website so everybody at home can see right <clears throat> um so i'll let's see yeah you turned off yours or i'll, I'll i'm going to turn off your your share and then i'll share to you so you okay. see so right there so this is this is the um the actual image on my website with that i did and you can see it's much clearer than yours right mm -hmm. Um, and the right side does have a curve to it. Um, the thing is, you can see the left side is much farther down than the right side. That's because the camera oh, was down. slightly tilted, right? It wasn't. So the tilt made it look much more curved on. So how do you tilt half of your camera? No, the, the, the entire is camera is tilted. And the peak of the curve is in the middle of the right side there, just, just above like that specular high, highlight. And the right side of it, so the, 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 the entire right side of that is actually curved left to right. It's not a I strong I see a curve. little bit of curvature, yeah. and I acknowledge yeah. that. So, but uh, but here's the, so, so let me show you. Here is, here is the actual original image. You see that? Mm -hmm. And if you click on that right there, this is the raw image original from Rory right here. So, you yeah. go, so here's, here's what I did. And I, I don't have the Photoshop file handy, so, but I, I do have a different one. I'll show you. And I went here and I counted nice and close here, right? I, I used Photoshop. I went in and I actually drew uh, one pixel at a time, um, just a, an, a, a pattern so that I could count the pixels all the way across, all the way left to right here. Uh -huh. And then I put that in a spreadsheet. <clears throat> so let me let yeah. me just let me get to to this one here. So because this one I did more work on, um, I want to. I want to do do the same for Rory's, but this is from from Tommy Gronvold, who just uh, this month uh, hit his two year anniversary of having a YouTube video, a YouTube channel. So um, <clears throat> the location is right there at the top. This is also on my website. Um, you can uh, we'll click on the actual image here, and you can zoom in here, and it's the same thing. It actually the the camera is slightly tilted. Right here is the the IMG underscore zero six eight eight. You can download the original raw file unmodified from his camera. Uh huh. Right, and then here is what I did to count the pixels. This is a, a screenshot in Photoshop. You can see right there, it's in Photoshop, and I put this overlay on. You see that left that that zigzag in uh, blue pixels. Yeah. So each of each of those boxes is 10 pixels. And I have this this vertical white line is a guide that's in Photoshop and I put in and then this 
this blue line is what I chose as the um, the edge of the horizon. You can see at the bottom, 32 pixels. 33 pixels, right? I did all the way across. This is just a small sampling. It took a long time. So that's what I did to quantify the actual um, difference there, right? And, and mm -hmm. so then I put it into a spreadsheet right here. Mm -hmm. And you can see the numbers on the left here. And then mm -hmm. I put it, I did a second order polynomial line fit, which is what this is here. So let me get that so you can see it. And it actually gives you the equation right there, right? And you can yeah. see it says x squared. And you can, so the, the, uh, the dots are the actual measurements and then the the line that's the curve there uh -huh. so there you go so that that's how i would expect uh a scientist to measure the actual curve to quantify okay. whether it's curved or not so so with this whole thing you're you've said you've just kind of recreated what you saw there uh the the curvature that you saw right so the question here comes down to the place, because uh, I already told you I already acknowledged that we saw a curve. Yes. Okay. So the, 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 it's about the end game here. What does that mean? What is the significance of it? Right? Uh, and so I didn't really bother making that because we could already see that was curved. All you've done is just told us what we already knew. Yes, yes. Our okay. eyes already saw it. So, yeah, that's... So what is the significance of that? Because uh, what I shared here was that the, we ran into a problem because the curvature we saw on the left was not equal to the curvature we saw on the right. You got that? Yep. But it, but it actually is. If you quantify it, instead of just sight it with your eye, um, you would see. Okay, so you're saying it was curved, the curved, the exact same. Because I can go out and I can, I can uh, pull out that picture, and yeah. I can, I can measure just how much change there is on one side versus on the other, and I can see that it's, it's not the same. But you didn't. It just doesn't look the same. But, I can measure it and yeah, we can see so, that. Yeah, okay. Let's let's me so let, let's leave this for homework for cuz I I did do the measurements and I did not do them. The reason why I don't have them on my website is I as I was sloppy with them and I didn't do it in a way that I'm like, "Oh, I could show it on the website or I could download it in a Photoshop file like I did for Tommy Tommy's." So, I've been like it's been on my to-do list to go and do it better so that it could be. So, tell you what, let's both do that and um measure it. I'll measure it. I'll send it to you, and you can you can measure it, and uh, we can share that information. How about that? Okay. So, all right, you've you've looked at it all together. So I want you to specifically look at the the, the amount of curvature see you see on the left, and compare that to the amount of curvature you see on the right. Right. If it is showing the curvature of the Earth, it should have equal amount of curvature on both sides. Yes, and it, it should does. be equal on the left as it is on the right. However, if it is not caused by the curvature of the earth, then it's going to be uneven. Just as I've, that was the whole premise of the video. Yeah, yeah. It was part of it. We saw a lot of curvature and the other part we didn't. And so that told us that it was not caused by the curvature of the earth. Well, but you didn't measure it yet. So let's do that. Let's measure it. And then we can, we'll have numbers we can quantify and see, well, is the left actually curved or is that just our eyes? Because our eyes are not great measuring devices, right? They're, they're flawed and they're, we can't see, like if you buy lumber at the store, you don't look at a piece of wood left to right and s tell whether or not it's straight. You hold it and you look down, down the line, right? I don't know if you've okay. done, I don't know if you've done carpentry. I've done a lot. So, so I have one right here like that, right? You look down at uh -huh. this way to see if it's got a, a, a an arch on it or not. This yeah. way we can't tell. So you're looking at that this way and saying, I don't see a curve. But this way, that's why I held a straight edge to it. <laughs> yeah. So let's do that. <clears throat> um, so uh, 
let me we've got a bunch of super chats that came in i want to i don't want to skip them um if you don't mind before a couple questions for you so let's see phd tony now he he actually has a phd that was um that he got that he earned right Kyle, have you any explanation for how Rayleigh waves do multiple circuits of the Earth at a period independent of distance from Antarctica? Are you, is he talking about tectonic waves? I've, I've been studying about uh, the P waves and S waves. He's got to be a little bit more specific if he wants me to understand what he's talking about. Uh, well, he is. He does deal with um, earthquake type stuff. Um, PhD Tony, if you could just tag me to clarify that a little bit. Um, so let's see, uh, we got that. <clears throat> so a guy named GPS asks, how does GPS work on flat earth? I just released a video about that. Well, good. Uh, it's about, fresh. Uh, huh? It's yeah. fresh. Gosh. Yep. Uh, I talked about how satellites can exist on the flat earth. I went and acknowledge that that wow. just because satellites exist doesn't mean the Earth isn't flat. And so, when you acknowledge the existence of some satellites, not all of them, but some, then it allows GPS to work. Okay. Okay. That's one way. Now, the existence of some satellites. Now, now the second way. <laughs> I got. <laughs> a lot of people think that you're very much like JM Truth. So no we've got Lee Tor Lay Tornado saying, ask him if he's related to Joshua Michael. That would be JM Truth. He lives in Montana, not not too far from you, I think. So, uh, all right. So Utah, satellites can exist. Utah's, I think Montana's a little ways away from Utah. You're basically next door. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, so it's all right. So you got into one level of satellites can exist for GPS. But now here's the deal. The specification for how to create a GPS receiver is public information, right? Okay. Um, it uses trilateralization, trilateralization, get that word wrong. It basically triangulates, but that's not the right word. The position uh, that you're, that you're in based on the amount of time it takes for the signal to get there. So the, what happens is each satellite sends out its location and its time just constantly mm -hmm. pinging that out, right? And its location is three-dimensional ECEF coordinates, I believe, right? And and based on the amount of time that it took, it can it can do the math and find and uh, for multiple satellites and find out well where do those spheres interact. So if that publication or if that information is public, then then that particular it's a three-dimensional spherical coordinate system. So how, how does it work more specifically than just satellites can exist? All right. So there's a, the second layer that I was getting to was that, that, that radio waves can be reflected off of the firmament. And so we understand that TV, uh, TV signals uh, and uh what was it ham radios can be worked can be operational without anything being up there to, to bounce them off bounce the signals off of or sorry there are obviously they do they do need something to, but no satellites is what i'm trying to say is we don't need a satellite up there in order to get ham radios to work does that make sense and so you can take a radio signal and triangulate it for off of how it's able to reflect off of the firmament without any satellite being up there. It's just a matter of trajection angles. Does that make sense? Well, an it's echo off it's of kind of a vague explanation. Have you Do you have the math behind that? I'm just going to say that's how it works. <laughs> okay, okay I, so I don't you, have you're just, not calculation. Sounds right? like you're just spitballing here. Just got to say. Okay. Um, maybe it'd be a, well, something to, to study in, in the, the higher level classes at the Flat Earth Institute of Science. What's that? You, it could be something in a in a higher level, maybe a four hundred level class. Uh, in On the, the road, we're always we're, we always love to pull out the magnifying glass, but we we try to get the basic concepts first before we pull out the magnifying glass even farther, and uh, that's always 
the fun thing. Okay. All right. So uh, we I heard back from PhD Tony. Rayleigh waves are a type of surface wave caused by interactions between P and S waves at the surface. So okay. that's that's about how do, how Rayleigh waves do multiple circuits of the Earth at a period independent of distance from Antarctica. Okay. And? Oh, he's just asking for an explanation of that because because seismologists uh, use that information and use the geography of the spherical Earth to to you know to work out these things. Well, uh, he sounds like a great person to talk to because I've had a lot of questions about that as I've been studying about that in the textbooks I've been going through. I've been really looking. That's been a hot topic for me lately is studying the the P waves and the S waves as they travel through the ground. I'm like, okay, because uh, the textbooks, they like to point at, okay, well, it takes place at the epicenter, but the epicenter isn't where it's happened. That's the point above it. And then it talks about the focus of the of the earthquake that is creating all these different waves. But the focus is way down below. But the focus is really just the the central point. It's uh, It's taking an average and saying, okay, well, this is right in the middle of the fault line but fault lines can be like really really long and so if you've got this great big long fault line and say okay well it's taking place right here at the center that's really misleading <laughs> does that make sense and so would uh, you would, how, fault lines, uh, uh phd not exactly straight P lines either phd tony is available okay how about i, yeah, I can... who's he is someone i would love to talk about All that right. and, i will uh, send him a link and he can join us shortly okay so all right um stringer yeah, fault I, I lines would, are... uh, we'll, we'll 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 come back to the pns waves in a minute here um okay. since we have tony coming on but uh let's see we got stringer news one said oh my goodness uh so far he's in league with professor howard hill now i don't know who that is me neither stringer news one who is howard hill all right. Da, da. There it is. Tony's email address. Now, uh, Professor Tony lives in, PhD Tony, lives in Australia. So no uh, no picking on his accent, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah. He's, Wouldn't he's dream got, of it. He's got, a, he's got an awesome accent. It's... So, all right, let's see. I've got a couple. I've actually got quite a few flat earthers down there in Australia. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, really? Anyway, all right, uh, let's see. I've got that. All right. Uh, Vishanti, um, she says an art degree is not a scientist. Uh, actually, it's art degree, exclamation point, equal scientist. So that means not equal to if you're a programmer like me. Okay, well, she can feel free to consult the dictionary on that one. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Saida Met already got. Let's see. Stringer is one on some, Professor Howard Hill. I don't know who that is. Uh, let's see. Uh, JPP3030 says it appears that the BS degrees in art at Dixie University actually require less coursework than the BA degree of art. Zero upper division science required. So, um, yeah. So, like, what science did you take? Like, physics 101? Physics was a requirement in order, to, so in just, order for me to get my, my degree. So, just physics 101, right? Yeah, it was Probably just a basic physics yeah. class. Okay. And then, yeah. and then like, uh, for... We've got Tony coming in here. Uh... Physics and geography; those are the, the two ma major ones. Yeah. But I didn't go like super into depth back then. I wasn't a flat earther, so I didn't really care about this stuff. I was like, oh, it's trivial information. I don't know why they're teaching me all this stuff. But yeah, <laughs> I'm like, wow, now it's really interesting to me, and uh, that's been my favorite part about becoming a flat earther is it takes something that was once really boring to me and has made it extremely interesting. I suppose. Uh, all right, we've got. I'm arranging things so that Tony looks good, and Kyle looks good, 
and uh, I'm sorry I can't do anything about me looking good there we go um <clears throat> so all right how you doing Tony I'm very well thank you how are you I'm great so we've got some uh, questions about PNS waves so maybe uh, maybe you two could talk a little bit and see if you can um, come to a uh, come to understand it better all right so I've been really studying about the shadow zones a lot of people mm -hmm. point out the the shadow zones from caused by the PNS waves as they travel across the earth and say oh, okay well the shadow zones prove that the earth is a globe and so I've been really looking at that and mm -hmm. uh, I feel like there's a lot of oversimplification uh, that is, uh, but is what I've seen uh, in that. Uh, would you like me to address that issue um, a priori without you needing to go into too much detail? I, I'm not sure. Um, so, so um, the basic model, a basic uh, uh, model of the Earth is that it's a radially symmetric sphere, which is to say that it's comprised of multiple layers and the seismic properties within each layer are constant and defined by distance from um, distance from the center of the earth. Now this is an approximation, it's not perfect. Um, uh, so you know, the earth isn't actually a sphere, it's elliptical. Um, there are actually deviations from um, you know, the, 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 um, the seismological properties of the earth are not constant in layers, they're roughly constant you can do a good job fitting um, but that's um, that's actually it's actually not a perfect solution any any mathematical model of um, any physical system is going to be inaccurate it's going to be close you know the really good models are very very close um, but all of them are going to be a little bit wrong yeah, and um, okay so the the points you were the, the points you were raising earlier about the focus and focal mechanisms and that sort of thing, um, we're getting more sophisticated with that now. Um, uh, so you know the geometry of the focus and indeed the time dependence because you can have a rupture that starts at one point and then it travels along the fault or it travels along the fault inside Earth and it takes time for the rupture to get from. Um, one point to another, and so they're developing models that we can more accurately use to um, to represent uh, to represent the 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 more complex geometry of what's actually going on. But the reality is that these effects are reasonably small. There's a lot of there's a lot of information in seismic signals, and there are a lot of seism seismic stations, and there are a lot of seismic events, and we can use all of them to tell us something about the Earth's interior. Um, and so, um, even though there are some inaccuracies, and you're right, it's a the 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 basic principle. The basic principles in a textbook will be simplified. They'll be simplified for the benefit of the of the student who's um, trying to gain an understanding of how things work and what's going on. Um, once you get to the cutting edge, it's much more complicated. But you shouldn't, when you're studying a science, generally you will be introduced to the simpler cases first um, because that's the way knowledge is built you build up an understanding of the simple cases then you graduate to more complicated cases and then you more complicated cases still so, well, we agree so on that. they don't yeah, they don't so, show you all the precise measurements and calculations yep. you just make an open statement well the um uh, that's true but i mean if you if you for instance were to look at um say Javonsky and Anderson, 1981, the preliminary reference Earth model, um, which was sort of uh, uh, sort of an analysis. Uh, you know, it, it's one of the early um, and still quite influential um, uh, seismic structure models. Um, in fact, I've got it open right now because I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to reconstruct the results from a paper that uses their pressure profile. Um, but it's been, you know, there's the IASB um, model that's, um, you know, slightly improved on on PREM, and there's the, um, you know, there are multiple models. We're always trying to refer at the cutting edge. Um, you know, we understand we understand the point that you're making, and we accept it. You know, yes, um, there's a lot of, you know, there is the um, what you are reading in a textbook is immensely simplified, but that doesn't mean that we can't have we can't 
quantify how accurate it is because we can look at our predictions and we can look at the observations and we, say, and we can say, okay, we got that pretty darn close. Um, uh, not necessarily perfect, but close enough to have confidence in that model. Okay, and that's how we, that's how we confirm is by comparing our model results against our observations. And that's why it's important to have a model um, because otherwise you can, if you don't have a mathematical model that isn't producing testable um, uh, 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 predictions, mm -hmm. then you've got nothing. You can basically say, oh, well, our model's working perfectly because you know, uh, there was a source over here and we said that the earthquake could get over there eventually. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and it did, so that's great. Um, no, you need, it to be, you need it to be precise within certain time, um, uh, time stamps, within a certain error bar. And uh, it's because we can get inside those error bars and flat earth models can't, um, uh, they simply are unable to, um, that, we, that we know that um, the earth is- It's kind of hard to say that when you don't know of any flat earth models that have actually gone and addressed those. That's, that's, uh, that's a false, that right there is a false statement. The assertion that there are no flat earth seismic models is wrong. Um, there are a great many flat earth seismic models. They are used, um, in industry, for instance, on um, distances that are relatively short because over those distances, um, uh, the um, flat earth models are quite accurate and you can use them to reconstruct the depth of uh, mineral deposits um, like uh, oil reservoirs or gas reservoirs or that sort of thing. So um, actually flat earth seismic models, and they're, they're the simpler case. If you're teaching a student how to construct seismic models, you'll start with the flat earth case because it's simpler, right? The mathematics is simpler, it's easier, it's easier to do. So actually um, these flat earth models, they're the first models we developed um, and they work really, really well over short distances. But once you start getting up to the long distances, they don't work. So the well, statement that we haven't that considered, I beg your pardon? I imagine that'd be really difficult over any kind of model because Earth is so sporadic. There's all, you know, some really big, large chunks of rock over here, you know, big mountains over here. Uh, it's not all even or the same. Yes, well, um, yes, but the, but, the, but, but the spherical models do work, right? The spherical models do a perfectly great job using the same physical principles as the flat earth model um, and the same, you know, and, and, and a simplified stratification. Um, and even when you do the, even if you do a fully, a fully three-dimensional flat, uh, flat earth model, and those are available now. You don't need to do the spherical, you, you know, if you've got enough computation power and you're not trying to do lots and lots of calculations, you can just do a forward, um, forward model with a, with, a, with a completely flat half um, uh, flat earth and you don't get the, you, you, you can't match the results. It's just not possible. Um, and again, we have, so imagine a seismic event, okay? Mm -hmm. um, now this seismic event will create what are called rally waves. Um, and they're a type of surface wave. They're very close to the surface and um, they, they'll spread out from, that, from, that, from the epicenter. They form at the epicenter above the focus and they spread out from there um, uh, in, in a circular um, pattern like, any, like ripples on a pond, so as energy tends to. And what you see, so if I've got a seismic station over, over here, then a rally wave is going to go from there and it's going to hit it after a certain amount of time. But the other rally wave, the other side of that circle comes round and hits it from the other side at a different time. And then after hitting it, after this one goes around, it comes around again. Um, and the one that went the other way goes around and hits it, and then it comes back around again. And the time it takes, that repeat time that it takes between the first arrival and the third arrival, or the second arrival and the fourth arrival, those are um, uh, calculable. They're systematic. It's um, a surface now, it, wave that goes all the way around the circumference of the Earth. Is that uh, and that's yeah, what Yes. Having. Yep. That's very interesting. It's okay. I also find it very interesting the whole claim that you know when one earthquake happens, it shakes the entire Earth. That's a very interesting fact to me. Well, if it's if it's large enough, I mean everything shakes the Earth when you but when the entire, you not just a little portion. The entire, yeah, yeah, that's 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 right. But I mean, 
not every earthquake is felt. I mean, you know, define what you mean by an earthquake. A magnitude three event isn't going to be felt at any significant distance and it isn't going to be recorded by instruments. But a large enough event certainly will be felt all around the, all around the world. Um, that's just observable fact. We can see the seismometers and we can see the reactions. Um, you know, um, so um, if you're going to if you're going to dispute that, you're going to have to say that our si that seismometers are wrong. You're also going to say that gravimeters are wrong, which perhaps being a well, flat earther, you I'm, already I'm exploring do. Exploring right now, I'm not really saying what is wrong and what's what's mm -hmm. right. I'm just exploring this whole uh, concept, and those are some of the more interesting points that I just thought were noteworthy. Is just that okay. one earthquake, you know, way you know over here ends up shaking the entire earth and that's how p waves and s waves can travel to the earth and that's where yep. the whole concept comes from the entire concept yep. of that of p waves and s waves prove molten core uh and proves the shape of the earth it's based off of that one claim that one earthquake can shake the entire earth yep and since there are tens of thousands of earthquakes that we have observations for, we can pretty much demonstrate that that's entirely true. So I'm not sure where you, where you, if you want to assert that that isn't true, then you need to find well, it's, um, it's somewhere not, in the sorry. seismic record. I didn't make that claim that it wasn't true. I just no, said no, no, I didn't. I didn't say what I said was if you want to make the claim that that isn't true, then okay. you're going to have to go through the data and, and prove it because We've had people who have dedicated their entire careers, many decades, and you know some of the um, some of the greatest minds on the planet have dedicated you know decades to the study of this phenomenon, and um, and uh, you know they they don't see the they don't see the possibility, and you know um, uh, there's no way that the conclusion is that there's no way to reconcile the seismic data that we have. Um, with um, the proposal that the Earth is flat, I've been talking for a long time, and MC Tune has um, been uh, largely silent. So okay. I'm going to. This is all very interesting. You're, you've you've been able to tell me a lot more than just what the basic textbooks have been able to tell me on the matter. Yeah, I've been really trying. So I really appreciate you on that. Uh, yeah, it's one that I'm. You're open. you're welcome. I, I, really I do, I do want to say that that. Um, uh, I, I have a YouTube channel and it has some videos on it um, uh, and maybe you might like to check those out um, but um, uh, just uh, uh, I've come across a few flat earthers um, and uh, you are far and away uh, sort of the least shouty or unpleasant or, um, or obstructionist um, so um, thank you very much for that. Thank you yeah I, I, I really I'm Sorry, I get a little loud sometimes. Um, no, 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 no. That, there was no veiled criticism there at all. No, I, I appreciate you though. You've been great, and uh, yeah, I really want to learn more about this, and that's mm -hmm. how I, I try try to make more qualitative uh, videos. Mm -hmm. so thank you. No problem. I'm just putting your your uh, <clears throat> Tony. I'm putting your link in the in the chat there for people. So. Okay, thank um, you. Now, I, I never knew about this whole thing about the flat earth uh, uh, models that you're talking about with the, mm -hmm. the seismology. And yeah, I'd love to find more about that and learn more about that because that's one thing that your textbooks don't really do is get into the fine details and okay, well, this is where you're finding you know, these models and you don't really get to work hands on with the people who know their stuff about that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. No, it, it, it entirely makes sense. Actually, my PhD thesis was all about adapting flat earth um, seismic models to um, uh, working out viscous deformation. So the deformation under large, really large surface loads like ice sheets, for instance, um, they oh. weigh so much that they deform the earth. And we were looking at sort of some high precision ways of, mo of uh, modeling those. And I was adapting some flat earth seismic models to do that. Um, you know, and, and, and it gets back to sort of one of, the, one of the points that a lot of flat earthers say, they say, you know, well, as far as I can see, it's flat. Yeah, on, on short time scales, a flat earth, perfectly valid um, approximation. We use flat earth approximations all the time. Um, but uh, once you get up to sort of significant length scales, continental length, you know, certainly, 
by the time you're a continental egg scales, you are well past the point where um, flat earth models can be used validly. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's where it really comes down to accuracy. And I understand that over those things, and you acknowledge this much yourself that when it comes to the really big scales, you get the larger amounts of uh, margin, you get larger margins of error. And so yeah. it's really a matter of verifying that, you know, and seeing past those margins of error. And so being able to well, verify this is the curvature of the earth that we're observing. And it's not just, you know, a yeah, well, that's error. the point. That's, that's the point that MC Toon was making earlier. Um, that um, sort of you need you need to be you need to be careful to quantify because your your observation. So we see curvature, but that's due to some other effect. Um, well, you can only say that if you've quantified what impact that other effect can have and what impact the curvature of the earth can have. If you haven't quantified that, um, then that's just a that's basically a generalist argument. It could be that, but you've you know, you haven't done any of the work to say that, well, it is that it, it, it's consistent with that or it's inconsistent with that. So, you know, there are effects that we look at and sometimes we can't tell whether or not they're in sometimes we can't tell whether or not they apply at a particular point on Earth's surface. But some points on Earth's surface, they're so large that they just dwarf the error. And you can say, OK, there um, we're certain of what happened. Generally, we, 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 can't be, we can't be too certain. We can't disentangle everything. But in some places, it gets so big that it overwhelms our, our, uh, the uncertainties for all the other causes. And you say, OK, so there's no other explanation. It's got to be that one. Yeah. And so with with the picture we were looking at before with just looking at the, the horizon there, we, we had what I saw was zero curvature on one side and then I could see mm -hmm. some curvature on the other side. And so I don't you keep saying quantify, but we're looking at zero curvature. So you're asking me to quantify. Yeah, well, the human eye isn't the greatest instrument. And that's the, and that's, the computer, so. OK, well, I mean, even the human eye, even the human eye um, uh, with computer. And I mean, um, it's it's a uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure what happened because it seemed like MC Tune was using a much sharper version of the image than you had available to you. So I'm not certain what happened there. But um, yes, the 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 image you had, it would have been very very difficult to um, to, qual to quantify at all. Um, mm -hmm. But the image MC Tune showed um, quantification was certainly possible. So something happened. There was some discrepancy, perhaps in the download process, perhaps in some sort of compression yeah. or decompression algorithm. I don't know. Um, yeah, but uh, and this is copy and this paste. is yeah. This is the other thing. This is the other thing that I would generally, as an Earth scientist, uh, you know, I see a lot of people talking about images of the horizon or the images, you know, um, uh, images across water and this sort of thing. And I go, well, that's not the evidence that I would use, right? I'd be really going for, um, you know, um, uh, the character of the Earth as inferred from geological and ge well, geodetic and seismological data. Uh, you, you mentioned GPS. I actually worked down the hall from some of the people who work on the um, MIT um, uh, GPS processing software. And in order to get a solution for that, um, in order to get really accurate solutions um, that you can use to identify, um, uh, uh, you know, plate motion, for instance, the, the motion of continental plates or, um, or that sort of thing, or slow slip events or whatever, um, uh, you need to solve for the satellite orbits. So the satellite orbital parameters need to be solved for because Earth's center of mass is actually moving through time. So the orbits are moving, the orbits of the satellites moving around, and you need to solve for the constellation geometry in order to get those really, really accurate um, solutions. Um, so yeah, a GPS uh, bouncing stuff. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. Um, bouncing. Okay. Uh, um, so, the you know ba bouncing stuff off the off the firmament, off the firmament. looking no, no it doesn't work that way. Um, uh, it can't work that way. Um, if you if you imagine if you imagine a dome above the surface of the Earth and you spread out a wave, then the wave is going to go up, hit the edge, and then it's going to go down to the receiver. And yeah. then, but another wave is going to hit the dome at another point. And also reach the receiver because it's now it's now um, propagation. So basically, you're going to get reflections at that receiver from uh -huh. the same transmission 
um, at all different time series. So it wouldn't make any sense. You wouldn't that be able to- That is a claim to, I have not heard before. That's a good one. You, you, yeah. wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It'd be, <laughs> just be a confused muddle of noise. I appreciate that. That's the first time I've ever heard that one. And so I, I just have to wonder here with that is uh, ham radio. Why do we just hear one signal? You know, we can talk to someone on a ham radio and, and say, hey, how's it going? You know, from way across the world. And yet we're not we're just getting one signal out of, you know, all these other ones and ham radio and the the globe earth perspective of that is just bouncing off of the ionosphere. But yes, because you are, because crisis. because in practice, because the surface of the Earth is not a chord across a sphere. So um, uh, the geometry that I just described is a result of a flat line inside a dome. Yeah, right inside a spheroidal. If yeah. you make it a curved, if you make it a curved body inside an equally curved surface, um, you get the angle wrong. It doesn't end up where you where you are. Um, uh, you know, I, that's, um, I'm not perhaps understanding I'm, how you're saying it, it can't work, but it does work because of or with ham radio. So no, no, like, no, it, how it, can it's, it work with ham radio and not work the way, the way you're describing it. Okay. So the, um, it's got to do with the fact that the sums of angles inside a chord, um, uh, so a chord sub, so a chord across a sphere, right? sub tensor constant angle so the a chord um, is just a plane or, or a chord is just a plane across a I, I you know i think i'm getting this right you may you may you know i think i'm getting this right but i don't think that the um the, so mathematically i've got a point here and a point here on a chord um there's a there's a point at which the there's a point at which this thing reflects and gets back to uh um, and gets back to there right mm -hmm. Okay. okay. It's also got to do with the wavelength of the um, wavelength of the transmission, as opposed to because my, because GPS satellites use a very different wavelength than mm. yeah. Short wave okay. Radio. So that's yeah. Um, so that's a that's a chord across a circle that MC Turn is um, Thank is you. showing you there. Okay. Um, so the um, uh, my attribute. I'm working on the fact that the chord is actually at the center of the sphere. And therefore I'm you trying get- to, I'm trying to understand what the chord has to do with anything. Okay. So a chord, and so it's because of the geometry of the way chords relate to circles. There are particular laws about the um, angles subtended by a chord at the, um, at the dome. So if I've got a chord across the hemisphere, the angles subtended from that chord at the dome um, obey certain relationships, okay. right? So it's the, you're um, talking about the chord up in the sky, not the chord. Going no, no, no. I'm I'm talking about the chord of the ground. So you've okay. got two points that lie mm -hmm. on a chord. You can go up. You can hit the dome, and there's an and there's a um, and there's an angle up there. Um, but uh, I'm pretty suspicious about that. Um, that you'd also get signals from other points because. Um, it's one of the it's one of the actual problems that it's one of the it's one of the problems that we have with GPS um, observations at the moment is actually there's an error in GPS analysis called multiple receive multiple wave multiples um, and what that means is that what you've got is the signal from the satellite comes down it misses the that there's one that hits the receiver. And there's another one that misses the receiver and bounces back up to it. And there's another one that bounces before the receiver and gets back up to it. And so you end up with multiple receptions at the receiver from all di from all these different um, directions mm -hmm. as a result of as a result of the GPS um, ray. And so wave multiples need to be solved for, and you basically need to be and they're a characteristic of the geometry of the site. Okay, if you've got a big building over there, um, that can throw your entire that can throw your observation the precision of your observations out. Um, okay. So, um, so um, I'm GPS pretty does work, but with, even though it's got multiple different receivers or reception, it's getting multiple signals. Yeah, from but the, but it, but it's a question of accuracy, right? It's a question of accuracy. If you just need to know where you are to the nearest ten meters, bugger it. You know, yeah, um, doesn't doesn't matter at all. 
um, if you need to know where you are down to the nearest fraction of a centimeter, um, because you're calculating the, the effect of um, continental drift, then these are effects that you need to actually um, take into account. You also need to take into account things like your antenna geometry, because your antenna may not be, um, uh, may not be equally, um, uh, 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 may, not, may not be equally sensitive, it may not be a, um, a perfect receiver. You also need to take into account ionospheric conditions and um, atmospheric moisture content as the, um, as the radio waves travel through the, um, uh, through the atmosphere. So there are a lot of complexities. And really, if you had these receivers on the ground, you'd need to correct for it twice because there'd be an upward arc and then there'd be a downward arc as you got to it. And I'm pretty sure that you'd be able to, you'd be able to bounce it and it would propagate. It would propagate as a wave. It would once it hits that edge. Now it's just a wave source, right? Just the same as any other wave source, and it's going to propagate a reflection down to the surface. Um, uh, so um, you know, I'm really thinking that there'd be multiple reflections off the off the dome. Um, I'm okay. not a GPS specialist myself, um, uh, but um, I'm pretty sure that would be a problem if you were. <laughs> And you'd be surprised how few seminars I've attended where um, the character of GPS reflections off the firmament was mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a topic of academic discussion that often. <laughs> um, I would love uh, that. Off the firmament? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't discuss that because we generally don't include it in our models because we've no basis for assuming that that exists. Um, uh, so yeah, um, I, I'm pretty certain that that would be a source. Of, that would be an additional source of error, and you'd be able to detect it. So I have uh, yeah. I have read some of the specification for how to how to write the receiver part, um, and it, it, it's pretty cool that that if there's as the um, the location of the satellite is low in the sky. Uh, then there's additional uh, corrections that are to be put in based on ref uh, refraction. Yep. Yeah. Yep. When, when they're and very, those, when they're very actually, much, yeah, when they're very much up, you don't need to as yeah. much, but yeah. Yep, yeah, that's right. There's a, and indeed, um, sort of uh, one of the PhD students in our group um, wrote software that would actually map the sky. He could map the sky in terms of were there systematic corrections um, and it wasn't just a it wasn't just a matter of um, of uh, uh, you know their height above the horizon. There were also particular directions that were more problematic than others. You could you could actually see these uncertainty maps um, uh, in 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 the sky that the error became larger um, for satellites at a particular angle, but also in a particular direction. So even though their angles above the horizon were the same. You didn't get the same discrepancy in the in the signal reaching the yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, complexity that goes. I mean, we we are trying to achieve really 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 accurate results um, with these. So we are we are trying to check for every possible source of error, um, and uh, it's really really complicated. A simple thing a simple thing like you know changing the changing the satellite dish the the, the receiver dish can result in your um, your receiver being, you know, say, um, uh, one and a half centimeters away from where it used to be. Um, so, you know, um, when you're trying to be really, really precise, you need to actually, you know, um, you need really fine detail on what's going on at the, at the site. Yeah, okay. good point. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Thank you for that, uh, Tony. Um, uh, I can, I can, I, I can rack off and leave you guys do it if yeah. you want. Well, um, yeah, but... um, yeah, <laughs> if you want. Thank you, thank you. Um, I hope that kind of answers some questions for you. Um, uh, Adam, Kyle, Kyle, Adam. Sorry, I, I was thinking of something else. So. Let me, because uh, this will go wacky in a minute if you if you go. So yeah, thanks, Tony. Um, actually, let me read this uh, from PhD Tony for Five Australian. Kyle, it turns out the humans are not great measurement devices, which is why we use sophisticated instruments and complex air experimental setups. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Okay. 
um, yeah. Uh, so um, if you have any more questions, um, I can hang around. Um, but I am conscious that this is MC Tunes, <laughs> MC Tunes channel, and I just spent <laughs> like half an hour, at least oh, prattling at uh, prattling at people. So. Well, you've had some great insights, and there's a lot of things that I would love to hear more about. You've, you sound like a great resource to have. And so, yeah, so I, these other things. I'd love some, uh, yeah, links here that I can grab and go and research further. Is yeah, great stuff. Okay. So I, I can't um, I can't skip this. Um, that that uh, it it people are saying that it looks like uh, Daniel Pratt is talking to uh talking with the voice of jm truth <clears throat> um <laughs> on on uh on on mcflatty's ugly cousins uh, channel so <laughs> there, there's uh, that you're a harsh crowd you're a harsh crowd <laughs> so all right um yeah apparently it's uh, you're a deep fake of uh <laughs> Do, do you know Daniel Pratt, Kyle? No. That's a good. No. You don't need to know him. That, that is, that is wonderful. He is. Um, <laughs> he's a terrible. He's a flat person. earther, but he's also a thoroughly, thoroughly objectionable human being. Um, and uh, and you know, uh, I don't hold that against flat earth. He could be a globe earther. He would still be thoroughly objectionable. Um, it's yeah. not his flat earth beliefs that. Uh, that drive into that. Um, but, my uh, my yeah. whole philosophy is the parable of the unwise bee. Like I'm chasing after a bee and saying, "Hey, you guys got to go you know, listen to this. You guys, you know, and come out with them, you know, with hostility. Then they're just going to run away. They might try to sting me, but they're not going to listen to me. You know, I'm, and so, no, that's a. I think I think that a lot of people on on our side of the debate actually um, do succumb to this problem as well. They they are very aggressive. I yeah. think a lot of people entered this. Uh, uh, recently, I've come to the realization that a lot of people have entered this um, debate on our side just so that they can yell at people. Um, right. And uh, it can be fun, um, sure, uh, but you need to make sure that the person is actually deserving it because um, uh, there are at least a few people who are out there sincerely confused trying to work out what's going on. Anyway. Yeah, Team Skeptic describes himself as not aggressive. I'm not sure that truth in advertising is being upheld in that particular case. Um, uh, it's a... Team Skeptic. Okay. Mm. He's very humble, yeah. though. Don't don't forget that. We get a lot of people out there who are just like, oh, your guys are so stupid and you know retarded and all these other things, and they just say a lot of like really cruel things, and I'm just like so shocked. I'm like, wow. Do you... And the, they seem to get entertainment off of it. I'm like. So if you guys walk into like, uh, you know, an actual institution for people who are mentally challenged, do you guys just have a heyday and laugh at it all day and just like, oh, wow, you guys are so stupid. I'm like, what, really? Yeah. Are you really that terrible? <laughs> but, well, I mean, it, you know, I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of other. No, people. no, no. Well, I will. I do want to I do want to make a point in, the, in that I have been. I've been in this community, you know, I've been in the debunking community for only a few months. Um, but in that time, I've encountered quite a few flat earthers. And there are some who are genuinely confused, who um, who seem quite challenged um, intellectually, um, if I'm being honest. And there are a couple who are really just terrible liars. Um, they're actually just, you know, full of crap. Um, mm -hmm. And they're, they're basically peddling, um, uh, peddling nonsense. Um, uh, and then there are a bunch who are genuinely reprehensible human beings, um, uh, homophobes, uh, anti-Semitism seems un uncommonly um, attractive to a lot of flat earthers. And I think people forget that every individual on the flat earth side needs to be treated as an individual where we're prepared to sort of succumb to just generalizations. I've seen horrible flat earthers in the past, therefore every flat earther is horrible. Yeah. Um, and 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 it's 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 unjust, but it's also counterproductive because it cuts off any hope of a constructive dialogue. And um, uh, and I think that you know the habits that we develop here um, also expand you know to greater political discourse or greater social discourse. If you just tell, call the other person on the other side names, what reaction can you expect? 
other than for them to um, get hostile. You know, you, you're not you're, you're basically destroying any chance. Um, uh, <laughs> I just noticed actually looking at my screen, I am bright pink. Um, MC Toon is basically human colored. And you look very yellow, and I'm not sure why it is. There's something to do with the lighting effects there. Probably, um, <laughs> but just just weird. Um, but yeah, we we need to be we need to be yeah you know, sort of we, we need to be um, you know in general um, a sort of more you know more civil in our discourse. And so yeah, you know, I'm more I'm more than happy to talk with you at any point. So and again. I can't shut up. MC2's channel. Um, <laughs> do you want me to? Do you um, want me to go or stay? MC2? Well, let you me. Can, uh, I, I, if I could, do a few super chats here, and I think some of them are questions okay. for uh, for Kyle, and some are um, not the model that we are maybe uh, looking for, but uh, you know, we can mm -hmm. we can explore that a little. Uh, so, Morton Nielsen for forty five Donkey Kong dollars. Says this guy is as much of a professor as Kent Hovind is a doctor. Um, so I think I, I think Kent Hovind has declared himself a doctor, and not been granted a doctorship. I'm not sure about that. Somebody also said that maybe it's from a paper mill kind of university. So I don't mm. know. Fact hard well, for uh, two seventy nine Canadian says Kyle. Do you have modified sniper training? No. That's another. JM Truth reference. Okay. So, I Kyle, I, I need. I, I, I need. I haven't had specific sniper training. You were in the artillery, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. So the um. Uh. So the. Uh, I just want to explain a little bit because people will make a lot of JM Truth jokes because your voice actually sounds uncannily like his. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, you look very different, but um. Your your voice actually sounds. Um, quite strikingly like his. So this is why they're making all of these references to, to JM Truth and these sort of barbs. Uh, JM is a, seems from my experience of him to be a, to sort of be a compulsive liar. He has claimed um, uh, that he is a modified, he has had modified sniper training and that he is able to lecture in any university in the world on the basis of the degree he got and um, he's a master filmmaker and he can instantly identify CGI from real he, anything anything where um, you know people are going well are you an expert and he'll say yes I'm an expert um, and uh, and so people will start throwing random expertise at you um, because that's what JM says and you sound just in the quality of your voice just in the timbre of your voice you sound a lot like him Okay. Not that not that what you're saying resembles what he says, but uh, yeah, just a... okay. Good to know. This uh, this might have been rather confusing for you <laughs> as to why these JM Truth this, this the comments were coming through, but but uh, there are going to be a lot of them because you do actually remind a lot of people of this of this guy. So sorry about that. So Kyle, um, you did artillery. What what particular part of the artillery team were you on? I was a cannon crew member, and so I I got to drive uh, some of the ar artillery around. I did the the paladins, uh, and so. So you you drove them. You didn't calculate firing solutions. No, I wasn't on that team. I, I drove them. I, I uh, okay. as a gun bunny because <laughs> I because rounds in. I pulled the. Yeah, FM six forty is a, a a manual on calculating firing solutions for artillery that includes mm -hmm. uh, calculations to adjust for uh, the rotation of the earth hmm. in two different tables, table H and table I, uh, one that adjusts the azimuth and one that adjusts the vertical angle to, to uh, for the rotation of the earth. And it's different if it's, it's separate uh, or different numbers uh, in Northern hemisphere and Southern hemisphere. Interesting. So, if, I, why if, would it? Be, why would the Earth be spinning in a different direction in the southern hemisphere? Because the Coriolis effect it's, is is opposite north and south of the equator. It's different directions, and um, the, the Earth wouldn't be spinning in an opposite direction, though. So, so but the direction. No, no, it's not spinning in the opposite direction. I think you need to. I think you need to sort of. But so. If I'm if I'm in the northern hemisphere and I'm facing south and I fire a shell that is going south, 
um, closer to the closer to the equator, the tangential velocity of the point on the equator is faster than the tangential point that I um, uh, that I um, came from, right? Okay, um, so you're, you're saying so, you're, you're facing south. Yep. Okay, you're facing south, and the the speed at which the Earth changes from left to right, or from from north, sorry, east to west, is going yep. to be different. On the northern hemisphere, no, no, no. So, so basically, you need to, you need to. Um, so there are tables that tell you how much of a correction you need to make depending on where you're pointing the gun, right? Okay. If you're pointing the gun east or west, you don't need to make any correction for Coriolis force. Um, if you're a sniper, there are other corrections that you do need to make. Um, I thought that uh, would be the most important because it's the east and west one. So it's it's going to be a lot faster going east west. No, no, west because west. the when it's launched, the shell... So I have a shell, it's rotating with the Earth, okay? Mm -hmm. So it has, it already has the speed of the Earth factored into it. So when I fire it east at something that's rotating at the speed of the Earth, it's already got that... It, there's basically no relative velocity between the target point and the shell. They're they're at rest relative to one another. Okay. Okay. So so there's no change in the distance between them as they both rotate round. So I don't need to make a correction when I'm pointing east or west. But when I'm pointing away from east or west, I need to make a correction depending on the angle that I'm pointing at. Um, and the sense is opposite when I'm in the southern hemisphere. So if I'm pointing at 45 degrees south in my south of my location in the northern hemisphere, that requires a different correction than I'm in, than if I'm at 45 degrees south um, in the southern hemisphere. Because in the northern hemisphere, I'm firing from a place that's rotating at one speed to a place that's rotating at a higher speed. Whereas in my, if I'm in the southern hemisphere and I'm shooting south. I'm uh, firing from a place that's going at one speed to a point that's rotating at a slower speed. So okay. it's because um, uh, the, the tangential velocities get smaller as you go towards the poles. Yeah. Um, basically, the correction needs to change. OK, yeah, I had a big, long conversation about the tangential velocity on my debate board. I've got this big mm -hmm. open debate board. I showed a little bit of it earlier. Uh, but I just kind of try to keep the concept. I've got one concept here, and it's attached to this one co other concept here. In uh, my textbooks here, it does the same thing, the cause and effect kind of a uh, mind map, as it <laughs> describes. And MC Toon, do you think you could explain what, what I was talking about any better? Or oh, yeah, I think that was, that was pretty good. If I could add that the east-west, you do need to make a correction, and that's the vertical angle, um, <clears throat> because... <laughs> Because when you're when you're traveling, uh, when you're say you take the extreme, you're on the equator and you're and you're firing one direction, you're adding to the velocity of the Earth, and what'll happen is is that will cause the 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 bullet or the the shell to go up, and if you're going the other way, it'll cause the shell to go down, and uh, and so you yeah, do need to make a slight but that's adjustment upward. That's down. that's not that's not Coriolis that's, though, right? That's Utvush. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's a different physical effect. Um, so I was restricting myself to yeah, yeah. discussion. Of, yeah. So uh, like the yeah, they're, they're, in, in the manual, it doesn't say Coriolis or Utvush. It just says the rotation of the Earth. All right. No. Oh, okay. All right. Um, fair enough. Then there 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 are multiple effects. So the um, Fohammer um, thirty five in the um, in the chat is actually um, in the midst of organizing an not an Utvush um, experiment. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Very excited about. So, all right, um, let's see. Vishanti is asking a question about fisheye lenses. Um, he wants, she wants you to answer for uh, something about fisheye lenses, but I don't think we've brought that up yet. Have we, Kyle? No, we haven't really talked about it. I, yeah. I've got some videos about it. That's the first thing that, that oh, people that point be. out is uh, after the first observation of the flat horizontal horizon, is sometimes we do see that, uh, and often it's because of a fisheye lens. We see the curve because of a fisheye lens, and that was my 
the one that was following up after lesson one was we looked at the Mythbusters and they went up there, showed people the curvature of the earth with a fisheye lens. Oh, I see. Yeah. That was your- yeah. And, and certainly fisheye is, is not a great way to uh, produce a measurement because unless you can quantify the amount of uh, distortion introduced by the fisheye. Well, it depends. What, what are you trying to prove? <laughs> Does that make sense? What are you trying to prove? Are you trying to prove that something looks curved? Because yeah, I, I I would not it's, use it's, it's, a fisheye lens as a uh, as a in in lieu of a measurement. I think everyone who looks through a fisheye lens is going to say, "Yeah, that looks curved." If someone was not saying it, 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 it say, "No, that looks actually flat." Then you'd say, "Okay, well, let's pull out the measurements, and then you pull out the calculations." Yeah, yeah. So certainly. Sense? I'll, that, always, that, that, you always want to you always want to look for a rectilinear lens if you're looking if you're asking is the horizon curved unless you can somehow otherwise quantify uh, or control for that that uh, that curvature. So one way would be like to to actually have a a quantified um, measurement of the the properties of the lens so that you can re- remove it through just mathematical corrections. Or you yeah. could have a straight edge, like like in that uh, the one that Rory did and Tommy did. So we're understanding this whole thing about quantification. I don't quantify something that no one argues about. If we're looking at the same observation and we both say the same thing, then if we both agree on it, then I'm not. I don't argue it further, and I don't. And, but if we both are looking at the same thing, and yet we have different conclusions. That's when I pull out the magnifying glass, and that's where all of the calculations. I just need to step away for a moment. All of a sudden, does that make sense? Yeah. And so, with your with your picture that we were discussing earlier, of where we're looking at the the scrunched horizons, I I looked at it and said, okay, it looks flat on this side, and it looks flat on this side. Now we could pull out the calculations and say just how curved it is on the left side. If someone was arguing and saying no, the it does not look curved on the left side. It actually looks flat on the on the left side. But I don't see anyone who's arguing that it looks flat on the left side. Does that make sense? That's why I didn't bother with any kind of calculations. Okay. Well, yeah, we have we have to come back to that. So, um, as our as our homework here. So, uh, Jose Reyes says, uh, "Flurf 101, repeat with me: CGI NASA lies." Kyle has not said any of those yet. Mm. CGI and NASA lies. Yeah, I've not heard you say either of those. Oh, uh, I could could I, it could I, be I, forthcoming. A lot, of, a lot of other flat earthers really like to point fingers at other people's beliefs and you know, okay, well, lots of nice about this or that, but and there's a lot of other things out there. I'm trying to think about. Uh, trying to be more specific here. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'll say we don't need to. I, I appreciate that you haven't said that yet. How about that? Okay. Um, okay. I've got a new member, PhD Tony. Thanks, Tony. Yes. No problem. <laughs> I realized I wasn't a member. And I'm, thinking, and I'm thinking, how is this? How is this? How is this? Uh, uh, how is this the case? Uh, I really. <laughs> You are just you are just such an even tempered. Uh, as I think Kyle has pointed out, um, there are a lot of people who get really angry and aggressive um, uh, uh, about this. But uh, you just you just have team, a completely team different way. Is with, in the chat. He is in the chat, <laughs> um, and he will point out that um, I can lose I can lose my rag when um, flat earthers refuse to learn. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, well, but, uh, I hope that you see that I'm openly trying to learn, and that's why I'm asking yeah, more precise great, yeah. questions and asking about the P ways and S ways. I'm I'm trying to yeah. uh, to apply seek first to understand and then to be understood, and I, I yeah. hope you can see that. I'm I'm really trying. No, no, the, the, you, the, I have no reason to doubt that um, that you are trying to learn. And if I if, you know if I if I felt that you were being intellectually dishonest or uh, or you know, not open to learning, then then I'd be behaving a lot differently. Um, uh, so, um, you know, I, I, I do see it, and I do, and 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 um, you know, I do acknowledge it because it's that that requires a level of intellectual honesty 
and um, not everybody on either side is capable of intellectual honesty. Um, so um, it's it's a it's a fine quality um, when I, I see it. That. No. no problem. As I under, as I try to understand your guys's concept better, then I can have much more qualified and quantitative uh, statements. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to say things that connect with you. And yeah. 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 Yep. So um, <laughs> we have another another JM truth here. We got Saeed Ahmed says, seriously, this guy's JM truth impression is spot on. And I'll skip the rest of <laughs> skip the rest of that. So <laughs> I mean, you, you, you're going to have to watch some of his videos and, I'll have and, to watch and his maybe videos. maybe have your wife like <laughs> close her eyes and listen to JM and see if she can tell. Um, so, all right. Indy Tiger says Flat Earth complicates physics more than Globe Earth. Um, but flat earthers don't understand that that do that's due to a lack of proper education. So I, I think what like like the it's bouncing off the the firmament thing. That's a pretty complicated thing that was just that's kind of just answered uh, or offered as kind of a vague idea that doesn't have any actual physics and, and analysis behind it, right? So, but but after after you listen to uh, to Tony, I think I think it brought something new to you, right? Yeah. Well, this whole thing is it's based off of something that I should hope that you already agree on. Do you argue with the fact that ham radios work off of bouncing something off of the sky? Okay. They bounce it. Well, yeah, the they bounce right in. The sky and it bounces. They bounce. The yeah, they bounce radio signals off the ionosphere. However, the um, the um, wavelengths involved and the the angle um, geometry and, and the geometry of um, the antennas involved is uh, very different. I understand? Um, it's a short wave yeah, radio, so, right? Yeah, so it's a it's a um, and that and that um, that in turn impacts how sensitive it is to angular effects um you know so these um uh, uh you know these and we do affect we do correct you know the people who do do analyze these signals do correct for ionospheric effects um but only on the way down from the assumed um uh from the from the well from the um the uh location of the satellites um, and you solve for the location of the satellites because you know while we know approximately where they are, um, uh, our, our orbit our orbit models aren't actually exactly correct as I was discussing before because there are multiple effects um, uh, influencing them. So, but yes, I do agree with what you say about ham radios. But radio waves and microwaves are actually um, are actually sufficiently distinct that they're um, uh, that they're not really comparable. Okay. And Stringer, Stringer News 1 uh, says uh, ham radio, again, is, is a little bit misinterpreted or misconstrued there. Uh, most ham radios use UHF instead of shortwave. And so they, there's names for the different frequency ranges. Um, yeah, and that's how mm -hmm. TV, so, yeah. TV signals are likewise able to be bounced off of the sky. You, get, you have to send yep. TV signals up there and be able to have clear enough reception to be able to recognize someone's face, not just their voice. Well, I don't think most TV is bounced off of uh, the ionosphere. I think that's uh, most just direct line. Well, um, that was just the yeah. article, the, the article's claim there. And so I was taking something that you already agree upon, or a lot, a lot of the globe earthers already agree upon and building off that. Yeah. If this so, can work, yeah the the, the, the so, point the point though of of uh, indie tiger was that it it complicates physics and what you you introduced a a significant complication of physics right the simple would be a satellite sends a signal down to a um a receiver the complicated would be something somewhere sends a signal and it bounces off of a spherical surface and then gets to the receiver um, while the other part of the transmission doesn't get received by the receiver. That's a little more complicated. Oh, the, That's the point. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think when we pull out the magnifying glass on anything, and I mean anything, everything gets more complicated. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense? 
And so when we when we just take something at face value, then we're going to see it as something much more simple than we thought it was. But now now that we're starting to oh now that we're starting to question things, now we're pulling out the magnifying. Is that really the case? And now things are becoming more complicated. So all right, so I, Stringer News One, who is a TV engineer. He says, that's 100% wrong about TV. I don't know if he's talking about what I said or what you said or what um, with UHF. Um, so, you know, the bulk of what I know about UHF is the 1989 movie by Weird Al. <laughs> so, yeah. George Newman forever. Um, all right, let's 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 move on here. Um, Stringer News 1 was wondering why you edited Rory's photo because it did look edited in your thing there, but I think we addressed that already. So, uh, Cinnamon Control for $5. Thank you, Cinnamon Control. Uh, this is uh, Kyle, quote, equations have to measure up to what we see in reality, unquote. And that's why we have math, to quantify reality and compare. You did say measure. Yeah, I agree. And so, yeah, I always say that this is the, the bulk of this video that I want to do really bad is talking about how uh, math is an adjective. Math is an adjective. And I think it's it is, a tool. For me, it, was, it very much is a tool, but it's a way of describing something. You got that? And so I look at this and I, I can see this angle and I can describe this angle in more detailed terms. This dis This angle is a 30 degree angle. And so therefore, math is an adjective. 30 degrees is describing the angle that we see. Does that make sense? It's a describing term. Okay. Now, uh, and that but way- That isn't, uh, can I just say that what you just did there isn't mathematics, All right? That's measurement and quantification. Isn't that mathematics? Um, no. You don't think mathematics is measurement and quantification? No. Okay. Um, so um, the mathematics is the manipulation of quantities um, to um, derive in, in, in the quantitative sense, mathematics is all about um, uh, deriving quantifiable results. So if I know those measurements over there, I can infer what these other values over here might be. That's the role of mathematics, right? Making um, about uh, and predictions about something that hasn't happened. Well, uh, to, de to, to determine... In mathematical terms, it's um, it, it's uh, yeah, it it's more of a determination. Um, if I know, you know, that mathematics as a process itself is not subject to uncertainty. The relationship between mathematics and reality is where the uncertainty creeps in. Okay, um, because the mathematical model may not be it may not be one hundred percent correct. The um, observation, the observ the observed values that we're using may not be 100% correct. In fact, they aren't 100% correct. Um, Can I quote the dictionary on this one? Um, no. No. Okay. Um, no. So that. So the. the series um, entry level. Uh, it's, yeah. Yeah. I got the so definition of mathematics yeah, here, and that's what I'm like. Okay, so the, yeah, but but I mean, so and you've done this a couple of times, and I have to say that as soon as you reach for a dictionary you're demonstrating that you don't really understand the topic that you're discussing because dictionaries are designed to give a very basic definition they are not designed to um, answer deep philosophical questions on the nature of particular disciplines um, and um, uh, and i think that reaching for a dictionary you really you know um, you need to sort of accept that perhaps somebody who has a significant amount of training in mathematics might know more about um, what mathematics is um, than, a uh, than a dictionary. Yes, the okay. dictionaries aren't diction. You know, so I did four years um, of honors level mathematics. I did um, you know advanced logic, um, philosophy of mathematics um, uh, in the philosophy department. In addition to um, in addition to um, the in addition to the four years. Um, uh, um, and the philosophy of mathematics is actually extremely complicated. What mathematics is, is a, is, a, is a really profound question. And if you think that a dictionary is, um, is actually the correct place to look for that answer, dictionaries are going to give you a potted answer that is effective in most circumstances. But once you get down, once you start getting into the philosophy of science or the philosophy of 
mathematics or you know what these disciplines are um, it's much more complex than just looking in a dictionary and seeing what was written there dictionaries aren't interested in you know if they were if they were exhaustive discussions of each of their topics they um, they'd never end they would be just um, you know just vast and unwieldy um, so they summarize and they make um, and they sh present short descriptions of each of them um, uh, so um, you know the mathematical tools presented um, the what I consider to be mathematics may not agree with what you consider to be mathematics but um, I'm a fully trained mathematician and you're not um, so I'm going to pull authority on that one I just go with the English language here. I just um, well, but my, it, but the English language. I go with the but, dictionary as the authority well, of the language. Yeah, but I mean, if you uh, sort of uh, the semantic, you know, and then you're going to have to get into the linguistic, the linguistic complexity complexities of semantics, the semantics involved in an utterance as opposed to the semantics involved in a in a collection of words. Um, does a particular utterance mean what the what the individual agglomeration of words um, uh, suggests? You know, um, if you look if you look in if you look um, the word up in the dictionary, um, uh, are you going to get an answer that is going to make sense of the phrase "What's up"? For instance, um, just because a dictionary just because a dictionary you know dictionaries are presenting a very simplistic analysis that is a succinct and simplistic analysis of what it is sufficient that you can broadly identify what it is that you're talking about mm -hmm. um but the reality of what a subject covers i mean you know sort of if you look like if you look up dadaism in a dictionary if, if I look up Dadaism in a dictionary, do you think I am going to be able to identify a Dadaist piece of art just by looking at it? I I don't know. Yeah, I have okay. tried. Um, but I just know so, there's two definitions of the word of the word mathematics in the dictionary. Just two, rather than ten, which is really unique for for a lot of words in, out of the in the dictionary. Because I understand most words, as you agree, as you said, have like ten or more definitions. But mathematics, yeah. just two. All right, let's yeah, let's I mean, let's get off of dictionaries. Um, dictionary is an yeah. entry level way to explain something. When you get into the actual field of something, uh, studying something, nobody looks to dictionary to wonder what they're going to do today, right? So unless you want to describe it, <laughs> unless you want to describe yeah, that's, that's an entry level way to understand something. That's it. That's all the dictionary gives you. It, it's just a beginning, right? Well, even at the most advanced as education you can get to here, as long as you're using the English language, that's totally dependent on the dictionary that you're using. If you want to, other people to understand you, you need to be able to so, use words. So people have, can no, understand. Uh, we're going to we're going to move on. This is this getting, okay. yep. it's getting too too much in the weeds there. I don't care. And. Okay. 256 people mostly don't care either. So, um, okay. uh, Cretan Bull says a professor from the university and eyeballing it. See, he wasn't impressed with your non measurements there. So, uh, Aaron Findlay says, does Kyle need the defin the dictionary definition of measurement? We're not talking about measurements, right? Or dictionary anymore. <laughs> Uh, Night Sky Jeff says, please repeat to him that the camera was tilted. Um, so I will. Uh, in in the, the Rory picture and Tommy as well, um, both of them were slanted the same direction. And so that causes the left side to appear more uh, non-horizontal because that's all our eyes with see. Jeff. So we, we chat a lot on, on the debate board. He's oh. constantly there uh, helping me out with the debate board presenting a lot of great information there. Oh, uh, good. He's one of the more active people out there on that. So I appreciate that. But he hasn't yet quite described how he's able to tilt half the camera. Well, the other one's not yep. tilted. This you'll, you'll have you'll <laughs> have the measurements that's here. Thing about how it's flat on one side and, and not on the other. That means half of the camera is tilted and the other part is not. I don't know. I'd like to see him expound on that more on, on the debate board. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Nerd Angle says, see proper science would quantify these things so other people could test and verify the information. What you're doing is saying, it looks like this way, or that makes sense to me. Uh, verifiable math is what he wants. So some, we've already we've covered that in detail. To... You don't need to respond to that or we will never get okay. well, we'll I just, move on. It goes back to the whole thing and there's no point in debating something that everyone already agrees upon unless you have someone who actually pre presents well, an opposing argument. I, I, and then all of a sudden that's I, when I disagree. The right side out. is curved, measured to be curved. Okay. So and, and so like I said, presenting out we will we will get to that, but not tonight. Okay. So okay. Jeff yeah. Roberts says, Professor Adams, does your school accept transfer credits from Chemtrail University? Will your degrees prepare me for a career in harassing NASA employees at Starbucks and shouting at children on recess? <laughs> That's what Nathan Roberts got. Uh, Nathan Thompson got arrested for yelling at children at recess. You yeah, know that? I'm not about Nathan Robert. Yeah, Nathan, about Nathan Thompson. There's too many Nathans. Um, yeah, yeah. Too yeah. many flat Earth Nathans. We've got oh Yunhe G says Professor Harold Hill was a fake professor that scammed an entire town in the musical The Music Man. Have you seen The Music Man? Uh, no. It's uh, the musical is in River Let's City. See which happens to be actually Mason City, Iowa, which I've driven through many times. It's just south of Minneapolis area where I live. So let's see. <clears throat> oh, Stringer News 1 has something pretty good here. He says a university professor needs at least a postgraduate degree in his area of expertise and be teaching at an accredited university. But Kyle, you don't have either of those, right? No, wait, I'm sorry, I missed it. A university professor needs at least a postgraduate degree in his area of expertise and be teaching at an accredited university. Uh, according to what dictionary? Sorry, we're going back to dictionaries again, but that's where I, about, I base yeah, English language Yeah, not according to a dictionary, according to how universities do things. Okay, according to some universities, that might be the case, but every university can play it off a little bit differently. Every every university can has has different standards. I guess yep. you could say I, that. And I, I remember um, when I was in middle school, I wanted to be a martial artist. And mm -hmm. so my friend Ben and I, we both wanted to be. And so you know what we did? We created our own martial art and declared ourselves to both be grandmasters. What we basically did was was discuss what color belts there would be. We never actually did any martial arts and it never went anywhere. But it's kind of the same to just declare yourself to be the top dog, you know, kind of what I saw. So, all right, we've got Lael is here, has a question that uh, is not on the topic uh, on the uh, flat earth here. Um, instead, he says, Kyle, what are your thoughts on Joseph Smith teaching on this planet becoming a celestial kingdom? Section 76, there are many worlds Moses one. I don't know what those references are, but oh, they're from the Doctrine and Covenants. Or sorry, Pearl of Great Price. They're from the Pearl of Great Price, and he's got some questions, the, theological questions, uh, about uh, about Moses chapter one here, and so whether or not what's going to happen to this world afterwards. And so, for some reason, he thinks that that means that the world is a globe, but. It didn't say that the world was a globe and so that are there more worlds out there than just our, the world that we live on absolutely i believe i very much believe in that i, I believe that god has his works are infinite they don't just end at the edge of the earth does that make sense and so yeah it doesn't really make sense but that's fine um <laughs> jessica g has a message to tony says they said finish him tony <laughs> um not i'm not gonna read the rest um but uh, you know mortal Sorry. Kombat style so yeah did not yes kyle you're you lucked out tony did not remove your head and bring the spine with it uh mortal okay. Kombat style. <laughs> i appreciate that 
Uh, Lael is here, uh, then comes back and says, Kyle, Joseph Smith clearly taught that the Earth was organized from other planets. Okay. Does he have a reference? He did did not provide a reference. Ah, yeah. Uh, he might. I'll, I'll watch the chat here. Lael is here if you have a reference. Um, maybe he's talking a little little too extempora extemporaneously to just to pull out a reference. Um, <clears throat> I'll move on uh, for the minute here. Uh, Aaron Findley says, The professor has just been schooled. Thank you, PhD Tony, for sharing your knowledge with us. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> oh, always stay in school. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Yeah, Ringer News 1 says, Kyle is talking like ham radio relies entirely on skip. In fact, it's rare. Most hams <laughs> use the internet to DX these days. TVs, not at all. I don't know what DX. It's not transmit. They, oh. They use the internet. They use the internet to, 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 to work ham radios? Or... No, I don't know what DX means um, no. in, in ham speak. Yeah, but the internet is done through all of the, the cables, the, under, the deep sea cables. I really recommend learning about those if you think oh. the internet is done through this. D DX is primarily. long distance. Um, no, I, I work in, in computers. I, I know that it's mostly underwater. Um, DX is long distance. So there you go. Most ham radios use internet to talk long distance these days. TV, not at all. There's no TV that bounces off the ionosphere, says the TV engineer. Hmm, interesting. I, yeah, that's a... But I did... None at all. I did get clarification. He... He, he says that AM radio sometimes can at night under certain conditions. Okay. So, yeah, the, the article I was reading was talking about, the, it's more specific. It talks about, uh, was it sky waves? I, I'll have to yeah, it, pull it up here. The, so I can... the, 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 the bounce requires specific frequencies, specific wavelengths. Um, and, uh, yeah, sky wave. Yeah. So, and GPS just... uses uh, frequencies that are um, much too high for it to bounce off the ionosphere, I think is, is the, if I'm speaking correctly, I think is the, the point there. So here it talks about DX communication right here off of the, yeah. the Skyway Wikipedia site. And that's exactly where it, it, the, the same thing talks about TV. A distant VHF, FM, or TV station can sometimes be received as clearly as local stations. Hmm. Uh, could you, could you have a link yeah. for that, that uh, I could send to, could send it to me and it's in just Facebook wikipedia uh, skywave just oh okay do that. uh i'll try and attach a link is there a chat there's a chat here's a link you can take that link and are you a moderator uh no nah, he I won't be able in... let's see he's saying up uh, uh stringer news one above 30 megahertz is line of sight the lowest tv frequency is about 40 megahertz Okay, so, so I don't know. That's just what it says over here. So I'm yeah. taking that. All right, Wikipedia thing. article there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Stringer News 1, you could maybe edit the article or find the reference. If it doesn't have a reference, you could add the citation required thing, which is very nice. Um, <clears throat> let's see. <laughs> Bella Charge for 5 New Zealand uh, says, Get him, Tony. Slap the stupid out. Works best if you hold with <laughs> one hand and use the back and forward hand. That's that's what he's saying, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Bella, Bella is very, Bella is much more used to different flat earthers, I think. Um. Oh, uh, Stringer News One says that PhD Tony has a better water heater than Daniel Pratt. I've not seen your water heater there, uh, Tony. I I I feel stalked now because um, I actually have one of those um, heat as you go things. Um, oh, that is it's better. In the cupboard. That is better. Maybe yes, that's could, it. could you could you maybe in, in a future stream have it like have be a sit in front of the cupboard with the door open, <laughs> <laughs> so we can see your water heater. I guess I I <laughs> guess I can try that. I'll I'll, I'll look into setting that up for in you. In case you're missing that reference, Kyle uh, Daniel Pratt sits in his garage, ranting at the camera with his water heater behind him. 
Um, <clears throat> so anyway, Loon Zag. As he spews the most. Uh, go ahead. Don't worry. As he spews the most objectionable nonsense imaginable. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> Loon Zag says, "I second." Was Jessica G? What sec? What Jessica G said earlier? Oh, I don't. Now I gotta find out what Jessica G said earlier. I gotta remember. Oh, they said finish him, Tony. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Stringer News 1 says Adam Savage is not a fish. Fish Eye Lens. Okay. I think that was. So Adam Savage, I believe, said, I can see the curve. Right? Mm -hmm. Did he say that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so his eyes could see the curve, so not the Fish Eye Lens. So there's con additional confirmation. Oh, okay, that's what you're saying. Yeah. That's so the, the, the whole video there was saying that He's saying something, and then he's showing us through the fisheye lens. Through, and so, yeah, and I yeah. would it would have been much nicer to have a rectilinear lens. So, uh, we've got Jolene as a new member of Newton. Thank you very much, Jolene. Uh, Indy Tiger again. He's been a little aggressive here. Says I navigated ships in the Navy. Ships at sea follow curved paths on the open ocean because a curve is the shortest path on the globe. How do you explain that fact, Kyle? Did they not take the trade routes that follow the trade winds? As far as I'm aware, they, they try to stick with currents. Is that not the case? With uh, I need to talk to this in, guy. In, in general, specifically to learn. in general, I think they they uh, they seek great circle routes. So they just totally ignore all of the ocean currents that would greatly help a, a boat get to a, from point A to point B faster. Because I know that with planes, they do that. They they look for the, the current in the sky, uh, the the jet stream, <laughs> and they use that to their advantage to help them get from point A to point B faster. Uh, it's it's generally done, yeah, but not ne not necessarily. You don't go way out of your way to get uh, to get some jet streams. Um, <clears throat> same with well, it depends with depends on the, the the cost to benefit ratio. Yeah, it does, and I don't think the, I don't think the cost to benefit ratio is that great. Also, a lot of, um, a lot of currents uh, are most, most ocean currents are actually um, somewhat deep. Um, yeah, they're not on the surface. Uh, uh, yeah, they're not they're not really surface currents. That's how most uh, water transport goes, and the surface currents are not necessarily the most reliable things, and they're not really that great against. Um, uh, against uh, vessels uh, as big and as unwieldy, unwieldy. See, I got it right this time, as the um, uh, as the the ones that are being used now. But it, you're right; they do it for they do it for planes, but I don't think they do it for um, ships. And one of the reasons is certainly in the navy, um, uh, you want to get from point A to point B in as little time as possible. Yeah, um, and you know, stopping and doing seasonal um, current calculations. No, you're better off just going there. Um, so, in the time that it takes you to do that, you're probably losing um, losing more than you're gaining. Um, yeah, they want to be able to, to explore a lot more of. I wish someone would mm -hmm. on, make an argument about that and put that on the board for me on our debate board, and that way I can address it more thoroughly. Yeah, if, if you send me, mm -hmm. if if that's something open to people, if you send me the link, I'll put it in the description here. Um, oh, absolutely. I can send, it. I'll do, send you a link. Send, right it, send it in the Facebook chat because uh, you can't okay. send a link in the, the this one here, uh, the, the YouTube okay. chat. So uh, Vishanzi says Sh ships use engines now, Kyle. Maybe the dictionary didn't tell you that. Well, a lot of people just go through things from a traditional route. Uh, they don't <laughs> continually make up new, new routes. They just do this because that's the traditional route. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Um, you right, need your link. Yes, I got it. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. We've got Yoon He G is a new member. Thank you, Vishanti. Uh, again, this is actually prior. She said has an art degree. Can't answer a question about Dadaism. Dadaism. Winning. Mm -hmm. I I didn't know what Dadaism is. I'd have to look. I'd have to use a dictionary to find out. <laughs> All right, um, Hugh Jars, very nice guy, Hugh, Mr. Hugh Jars. Uh, he says I'm a professor at Jars 
University at the School of Fed Assery. Arsery, arsery, not assery. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. I uh, wonder if I can apply to go to Jars University. Um, uh, Alyssa, now if you didn't see uh, uh, FTFEs last night, I was just talking to people in general, Kyle, I probably didn't expect you to see it. Um, uh, uh, Alyssa did a great job presenting some um, information on great circle routes that I, I have right up here and uh, navigation using um, that the airplanes use. And then um, Rad Vlad crapped the bed and was a horrible person. So there you go. Make sure you watch that on FTFE. Um, uh, Alyssa is wondering what, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, what was he a professor of again? Where? I think maybe. Me? Yeah, Alyssa maybe missed that. Just professor at the Flat Earth Institute of Science. So, yeah. What was the other part of the question? Um, it was where? What was he a professor? What was he a professor of? Yeah. Teaching? <laughs> Just a professor at the Flat Earth Institute of Science? Professor teaching. So, that's it. All right. Um, on earth <laughs> so now we've got a question <clears throat> a simple question for a uh, a, a professor a professor at at the institute at an institute of science uh, triangle if you have a triangle of sides one one and one what are the internal angles of one and huh okay so a triangle that was really fast you you have a triangle and the sides are one one and one what are the internal angles Okay, so we've got we've got a, a triangle and we've got the three sides of it. I'm just going to take 180 and divide it by three, and then that'll tell me the number. There you go. Okay, so what is 180 divided by three? 180 divided by three? Uh, I don't know yep. off the top of my head. I don't, but Eight, three, how about 18 divided by three? 18 divided by three? Yep. Three times six, isn't that right? Six, six, yep. good. And then you so add a zero. now you just need to, then you now just need to mm -hmm. multiply by ten. Uh, so the so this is a this is just a this is just a, a sort of standard question. But you got the you got the complicated part right, which was um, uh, you know that there are one hundred and eighty degrees in a triangle and all of the angles would be equal size. Um, so that's well done. Um, uh, just some basic numeracy skills, I guess. Yeah, they're just testing me to see how good I am in math. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see. <clears throat> uh, Alyssa, who who is a uh, uh, an active pilot and studying to get a um, studying to get his commercial license here, says the deviation from the great circle in a plane is minimal at best, even with the strongest winds. So, okay. <clears throat> yep. So yeah, the, the deviation. The, of they, the they don't. They don't. From... They don't make a large deviation to seek out jet streams or um, underwater currents or anything like that. So. Well, I'd say you'd use the. You'd want to deviate from the jet streams. That'd be much worse. And so you get like the the polar current up up there in the Arctic Circle where the. the the winds are just really, really heavy. And then you're going to want to go around it instead of going through it because you don't want to go against the current because that could really slow you down. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so I've, I've got some models on my, on my debate board that, that track the flight paths there and uh, they, they show it and they actually show the wind currents. That was really fascinating. Uh, Night Sky Jeff, we had a great conversation about it. Okay, well, so now then, then uh, on a same a similar vein, if you have a, um, <laughs> a man devil is wondering if if a triangle has internal angles of thirty, sixty, ninety, how many sides does it have? How many sides does a triangle have? It has three. Man devil, <laughs> you could not trip him up. Well done. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. <laughs> Res Rhetoric is asking about the 20 second discrepancy. 20-second discrepancy. It's a, it's, yeah. it's a JM joke. That's a JM joke. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a JM joke. Oh. oh. It doesn't matter. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, Speaking of JM, um, is is 10 to the power of negative 17 a positive or negative number? 10 to the power of negative 17 is going to be negative. Isn't it? Okay. No. <laughs> no? No. Or negative. You take and, a positive uh, by a negative. Shouldn't it be negative? I don't know. Yeah, well, it's a, a so so ten to the power, right? Ten ten to the power two is a hundred. Ten to the power minus one is one tenth or zero point one. So ten to the minus one is just one over ten. Forgive um, me, I, so, I'm just not familiar with negative so, power. So yeah, so one so ten to the minus seventeen is one over ten to the seventeen. Um, so it's a really, really small number, but it's still positive. It's still greater than zero. Yeah, there's there would be. Uh, you, you move the decimal point seventeen times, but it's still positive. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's a JM Truth thing oh, because okay. because JM Truth says that he has a master's degree in science, declared that ten to the negative seventeen is a negative number, and when called out on it, doubled down, saying it's a negative number again. I even have a T-shirt that says that. <laughs> okay, I understand. I understand the concept now of just moving the decimal point and how even even if you keep moving the decimal point over, you know, a hundred thousand times over, it's still going to be a positive number. I understand. Very that. good. Okay. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> What's five divided by zero? Five divided by zero. Uh, I'm trying to. I don't think anyone computes. Very nice. Well done. It's it's yep. uh, not a number or it's undefined. Thank you. There you go. Yep. Now so I, that's a that's actually a, that's actually an impressively good score. Um, those are three standard I, questions. I gave uh, I gave fifty percent, hundred percent, and zero. So there you go. Okay. But I, 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 there's more questions. People have been asking. Microraptor for fifty nine sex. That's my sex dance there. Um, <clears throat> if you have a circle sides one, one, and one, how much can you mess with a flat earther? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Yes, exactly. So let's see. Cypher zero. They're, they just keep coming in. Kyle, they like you. They do. Um, Kyle has been nominated for the Anthony Riley Worst Egg Experiment Award over at NASA Black Site area 69 that's another channel uh prayer is not an experiment good luck kyle you did mention okay. something in your most recent video about yeah. prayer and I mentioned science. about prayer yeah. how prayer can be experimental looking for physical observations okay I, I, there's two different things i didn't really go there was this was really based upon a prior video uh where i i had a my daughter was even in the video uh we talked it's i've got a couple of different channel or playlists and my major playlist the most popular one is the flat earth institute of science but i have another playlist called uh gospel insights and that one despite which one is more popular gospel insights is my absolute favorite uh thing to talk about it's my favorite thing uh yeah and in that in Gospel Insights, we've got uh, a video here called, uh, what is it, Faith? It was trying to, the Science of Faith? I'm going to find it. The, the name maybe doesn't matter as much as just kind of getting along with the point. Yeah, it's just a reference to which one it is I'm talking. Faith, Science, and Revelation. There you go. And so I talked about uh, objective and subjective and about how both of them uh are things that you observe in the experiment. And I use different examples of what is an objective revelation versus what is a subjective revelation. And I compared the two and how and I talked about how both are very important. Okay. 
And you also sang in that video. Oh. What's that? You also sang in that video. But I, I, uh, if I sang in the last one, but not the it, faith, science and revolution. Okay. If, was... if, if, if you won't sing, I won't rap deal. Okay. Okay. Good deal. That's safe. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh dear. Golden brisket. Oh wait. Nope. Hold on. I didn't want to jump into here. Uh, Fohammer three, three, five says, so if he can show evidence of Utvush and Coriolis, is that enough to prove the globe rotates? If not, what is acceptable evidence of rotation? That's a good question. Okay. So if I wanted to, if someone were to try and convince me that the earth was rotating, what would it take? Uh, I gotta think about that one. I think if the earth were rotating, the flat earth were rotating, then we'd see the waves going upward along the side. We'd see some pretty vertical waves that are just staying pretty vertical near the edges of the earth. I think that'd be pretty convincing, seeing these vertical waves. So, vertical waves, sorry? Sorry, I guess it wouldn't be a wave, it'd just be the vertical water. We, okay, so if you if you take a plate and you yep. spin the plate around, or a okay, frisbee, the water yeah. is away from the center and it's yeah, gonna move towards the outside. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And so, what are you saying that if you saw if the flat earth, accumulation of water if the flat earth okay. rotated that's what if the flat earth rotated i would expect to see something like that yep. and, and so, i've heard there's a lot of different convex earthers out there or concave earthers and maybe that's something that okay, they have but I, but, but what so what, what, a, what about measurements of rotation not 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 just Flat Earth, what you'd see, what, what if, what would be acceptable measurements? I guess is is the question then. A measurement of rotation. Yeah, what would be acceptable uh, as like a measurement? Talking, of rotation? Are we talking about speed? Because we're talking when we talk about rotation, we're talking about movement. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. Uh, I would think that uh, I was talking about this uh, in one of my videos here. I, I talked about. And that was kind of the one of the things about the the gyroscopes and about how if we could get an unpendulated gyroscope to stay uh, going long enough, we'd be able to see some kind of a movement take place on that. Yeah, that's happened. I guess that would be on a globe, not really on a on a flat Earth. But trying to prove it with the flat Earth. So uh, uh, on my website. I'll have to think more about that. Well. Uh, that that exact thing so so uh how about if if somebody were to get uh, a large uh disc very heavy large disc and spin it really fast right so then it's going to stay rigid in in space it's going to want to but but only but only allowed it to rotate on one axis right so you you hung it from mm -hmm. a a string and allowed allowed that string to rotate if that if that rotating disc, spinning disc, were to rotate at 15 degrees per hour, what would that suggest to you? If the spinning disc was rotating at 100... And at 15 degrees per hour. At 15 degrees an hour. Well, the outside edge is going to move a lot faster than it, than it is right in the center. In the center... It's going to be a lot slower, but on the outside, it's going to be faster. And so, if that's the case, I'm going to expect a lot more wind on the edge Wait, than I will. Hold on, no, no, in the no, center. no wind. This is this is a in a lab somewhere. You get, uh, let's say that uh, you get two 50 centimeter discs, each with a mass of 30 kilograms, and you spin them at 2,400 RPM, right? Two discs with a, a, an axle between them spinning at 2,400 RPM. And then if it were to rotate, what would that tell you? Um, it depends. I'm not really sure. And so uh, it depends on what I'm looking for to tell me, what I wanted to tell me. Uh, I, I'm going to look at it. So I'm going to devise my experiment, okay? 
and I'm going to have the different expectations. Okay, I'm going to do this and I can expect this to happen or I can expect this to happen. And so it really depends on what the the question is, my opening question. Does that make sense? Uh, um, what I'm aiming for. Does that? I'm trying to be more specific than that. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I I'm was not, just doing I'm it as, mo- a, as a measurement. I'm not as gifted in speaking as I am in writing, so for, please forgive me on that. Yeah. So uh, I I put it I I put it in the the chat here. There was there was a uh, an experiment done. It's actually just a measurement. Um, but uh, it's called an apparatus for measuring the Earth's speed of rotation, done in 1905. So long before NASA or anything like that. Um, where they uh, let's see, they they did exactly as I described there. So what happens is when you have something spinning like that, you have a gyroscope and and it wants to stay rigid in three dimensional space, but because it's only a being allowed to rotate on on one axis, it's limited to one axis. So it if you're on the equator, uh, you would expect that that uh, on a on a spherical rotating Earth, you would expect that it would not be moving at all. If you're at 45 degrees south or north, it's going to be rotating um, based on the sine cosine function of of your latitude. And north of the equator, south of the equator, it's going to rotate opposite directions. That's what you'd expect on a spherical Earth. On a flat stationary Earth, you would expect that it would not rotate at all, regardless of your position. Uh-huh. Right? Well, it rotated. No, I'd, have to, I'd have to explore that more. I, I really wish you, yeah, someone would make that argument and put it on my debate board there for me so I can explore it more, more fully. Okay. One of the major things I've been really thinking about on this whole matter has just been wind. If the Earth is a spinning ball, why do we see the least amount of wind on the equator? Uh, yeah, in, in general. That's why why would you expect wind? Where, what is the... What is the thing causing the wind on on a spherical rotating Earth? On a spherical rotating Earth, the things that cause the wind. Yeah. What would what would why would you expect wind and and how much wind, wind would you expect? Well, it's the matter of uh, okay, how much wind is would you expect? I, I'm not really sure on that one. Uh, I'd have to fish out more details on to so I can get a. Well, your measurement. The, the, the point is that you're, you're talking about wind and you're talking that you would expect wind, but you should be able to quantify how much wind you should expect and, and what would be causing that wind, right? But on a spherical rotating okay. Earth with uh, in, in a, uh, an area of space that has almost zero uh, atmosphere surrounding it, you would not expect anything outside of the Earth to be inducing wind on the Earth. There's no friction, right? It's not like you're in a bucket and then you turn the bucket and the water in the bucket eventually starts to start turning with it because the outside of the bucket is turning. There's no bucket there. It's just there with nothing causing friction against it. So you wouldn't expect but wind. May I... I can do comparison. I can do may comparison. I... I can set up expectations based off of comparison that doesn't have any numbers to it. It's just basing it off of comparison. Sorry, you, can, I, you can talk now. I just wanted to say that. Okay. So what happens is that the tropics are hotter than, and so there is more, um, uh, there is more precipitation, hot air rises. Um, you get a column of hot air rising and it sort of moves north or south away from the equator. It, as it moves away, it cools down and then it drops back down again. And so you get this flow of cold air coming in the, the hot air rising creates a low pressure zone that pulls air in, um, and then you get this high pressure. It's called a Hadley cell. And um, uh, as you get at the surface, because you've got these two bodies of air that are approaching one another, that are equal in volume, um, in between, they, they create what's called the intertropics convergence zone, or ITCZ. And um, uh, and that's where that because they're moving towards one another, they they sort of run into one another. They collide, um, and they sort of um, start veering um, 
uh, Westwood, I think. Um, uh, and um, and so, you know, you don't get much um, uh, wind at the tropics precisely because of these, uh, the, uh, you're on the boundary between the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere Hadley cells. So we actually do understand this extremely well. But what you've got to remember all the time is that for the last four and a half, four and a half billion years, the planet and its atmosphere have been rotating at the same rate. Um, and so, you know, if you it, imagine, imagine that the Earth has just been created, okay, and it's spinning and the atmosphere has just been created and it's stationary. So in the first instance, yeah, um, uh, there's the, it's not moving in, in time with the Earth. But the friction between the Earth and the, and the lower atmosphere is going to start making the lower atmosphere flow. And then the lower atmosphere is going to make the atmosphere above it flow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You continue that on for four and a half billion years. And after four and a half billion years, it's all going around pretty much at the same time. There's no um, discrepancy between the the atmosphere and the uh, and 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 the ground beneath it. It's all rotating at the same speed, you know, modulo wind effects and that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, Earth, it, but so long as the Earth is, is moving it, uh, or so long as it's not, it's going slower. I guess you could, I, it's still 15 degrees an hour. But I'm trying to say that. It's not yeah. the same as 1,000 miles an hour. Does that make sense? And yeah, so, yeah. Because you still have that difference between from the center versus the, the, yep. the edge. Yeah, there's still going to be more. And this, is, and this is called the Coriolis effect, and it's why um, cyclones uh, rotate in different directions as they move north or south. But it's still, from, that difference is going to has, has, it's going to create more wind where there's going to be more friction. Does that make sense? Um, wind is want to go slower over here, but as the Earth is. Um, yeah, but but the but so basically, it, you know, it's only really a problem when an when an air packet is moving north or south when it's moving further further away from the equator and the land it's moving over is rotating more slowly, or it's um, moving closer to the equator and the land it's moving over is is rotating more more rapidly than it is. In that case it will manifest as a wind. It will manifest as a difference in the velocity of the air packet relative to the underlying ground. Um, okay. But the, the, pattern, the pattern of those winds is um, in, entirely consistent with the, um, uh, with the rotation we observe. Um, on another point, um, actually, um, something that isn't, if you are very precise in your calculations of how long a day is, um, the way they measure a day is they have an azimuthal, they have a vertically pointing telescope and they wait for it to get back around to the same star and they measure how long it takes. And that isn't a fixed period, that varies. Um, in particular, the Earth um, spins more rapidly after there's been an earthquake. Um, yeah. It speeds up that. because, was, because yeah. what happens what happens is is that the faults sort of lift one another away so they're lifting mass away from the center of the earth and then when there's a collapse the mass suddenly moves and that happens quite slowly so there's this slow trend as this stress builds up and then there's a sudden collapse and everything lowers its gravitational potential and that's just like an ice skater bringing in their arms um, you get a you get a slight increase in the rate of rotation. Um, so um, so you know that there there's there is so much really precise um, instrumentation and analysis that goes to this. And um, if you want to explain this on a flat Earth, then you've got to explain why the length of day changes as a function of earthquakes, because I don't see how you're going to explain it. But then again, I don't I don't really understand how how you get the sun and the moon to move. On a flat Earth, anyway, you, you haven't really described how that works, um, but you know, um, it's it. There's a lot of really wonderful and interesting science um, that goes into looking at this, and um, and it's kind of it's kind of interesting. One of the things one of the things that I was just discussing the other day, there's a you were talking about um, water piling up at the edge of a at the edge of a flat Earth. Mm -hmm. um, actually, what we observe is water piling up on the western side of oceans. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, so on, there's a thing called, yes, because the, the world's rotating to the east, there's water piling up on the, on the western side of the oceans. I wasn't, aware called, the earth had, or I, wasn't aware, I wasn't aware of any globe earthers claiming that the earth had sides. I'm not claiming that the earth has sides. I'm claiming that oceans have sides. Oceans have sides. Yes. Did I, did I misspeak? I, I'm um, trying to understand you. Water, water. So, so MMC2 is illustrating. As the, as the globe rotates, right, the water has inertia and there is a, you know, there is a, um, uh, there is a tendency for the water not to actually move with the rotating earth. So you get sort of more water piling up on the western side of the ocean, of every ocean basin. So mm -hmm. uh, towards that, to, you get higher water levels on the western side. It's called um, the western, western intensification of boundary current flow. And it's measurable and it also, um, <laughs> we're not renowned for our Western intensification of boundary currents. So if you, if you, if you search for boundary currents on, on Wikipedia or Google or whatever, and then search for the term Western intensification, you'll see I've, this. I've definitely got to learn about this. The, so, um, uh, but hides on it. Okay. That's absolutely not what I said. Oh, the, sorry, the, the globe ocean has sides. That's what you said. Each ocean has an eastern side and a western side. West, right? West okay, side. See the globe that in... See the, see the globe that... The, the, you're saying the, no. the ocean has sides. The, the, the ocean has sides is what you just said multiple times. West side. Yes. Can you look at the globe? I'm, I see it. Yeah. And east side. Can you see... Okay. There's the eastern side. Can you can you can you agree that we that when you look at the globe like that, can you agree that there's a right hand side and a left hand side of the ocean that you're looking okay. at? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. I so there is an there is an eastern side and a western side. Um, because it's rotating to the east, there is actually a slight build up of water. But because water doesn't have that much structural integrity, it builds up a little bit and then it flows away. But what you get is an intensification, a westward intensification of boundary currents, um, and you get them on all of the ocean, all of the ocean um, basins, um, and this is measurable and quantifiable. And indeed, the pressure of the water against the those continents, those the the continental shelves, and and um, and the the drop off into the ocean basins, that pressure of water actually has an impact on Earth's speed of rotation. And over time, Earth is rotating more slowly, um, in part because of this effect. Interesting. I'd love to hear more of these claims on the board so I can investigate them more thoroughly. So, yeah, there's okay. a lot. <laughs> um, Quantum Degreaser is a fan of my, my gang signs here, my west side and east side. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I know. I can't nice. write can't write bloods and crips and with I don't know, on my hands like that so um <clears throat> so so uh let's see uh some people say yeah check discord so uh Lael is here had uh sent something to me a link to me i sent it on to you kyle and uh we have another uh -huh. another one from him coming up in a little bit let me um get the right one here so yeah, Golden Brisket has a, a fantastic question. If you have a non-Euclidean triangle with sides 6225, 6225, and 6225, what are the internal angles? Remember, it's a non-Euclidean triangle. I'm not really sure. <laughs> there, I don't I'm think there's enough information. We don't know what uh, what ge geography or what not. <laughs> geometry we are geometry using. The, the yes. geometry of the surface so it's one of the things it's one of the things um have you come across this aspect that if you measure the angles between widely separated three widely separated points on earth's surface and you measure the angle you, you draw lines across to them and you measure the angles between those lines um and you add up those angles you always get more than 180 right you don't get 180 when you do that on the earth were you, aware, were you aware of that? Um, 
I'm trying to visualize this out here. I, someone told me about three right turns a long time ago. That's right here. Uh, yeah. Um, that's my. That's right yeah, here. Yeah, right there. These are two of the three paths uh, that I plotted on real flight charts that have been used for decades uh, and to form a triangle with sides 90, 90, and 90. Impossible if it's flat and expected and required if it's spherical. Okay. Now, I haven't... I have to see that more thoroughly to, yep. to really sit, comment on it. It's yeah. I haven't seen that one on my debate board yet. Spherical trigonometry. So it's called... It's okay. called, yeah, um, the, in surveying terms, this is called spherical excess. And when they when they measure the angles between three widely separate points, they report the spherical excess, how much um, how much the angles add up to more than 180 um, degrees. Um, another thing that they can do is that they can look at two, um, uh, two telescopes, two azimuthal telescopes that are pointing straight upwards straight um uh directly upwards away you know uh, uh following the the um you know the line of vertical as defined by a plumb bob or you know um, some sort of leveling device and you can measure the angle from you know you can look from this one over to the top of that one and you can look from that one up to the top of that one and you can measure those angles from the horizontal and those angles all the way up to 180 degrees uh -huh. right um, that's a that's an example of some printouts of uh, uh, spherical uh, excess. Um, anyway, um, if you do that, you should end those angles should end up at 180 degrees if the if up is the same for both of those azimuthal telescopes. But in fact, in practice, it always adds up to more than 180 because those things are pointing straight upward, but they're not pointing in the same direction. They're not parallel. Um, mm -hmm. So the angles always add up to more than 180 degrees um, because they're pointing directly away from the center of the Earth. So um, there are multiple there are multiple um, uh, observational techniques based on really precise. Um, uh, you know, um, there's the spherical excess column. Yeah, if if um, I can, that's in. If you see um, right there, number 28, uh, I Ibapa. I don't know how to say that right. Pilot Peak and Ogden Peak. Observed angles right there. It's got 53 degrees, 38 minutes, 37.117 seconds. These are arc minutes and arc seconds. They're 1 60th and 1 3,600th of a degree. Anyway, at the bottom there, you see it says 62.160. You see that? That is the spherical excess. So it's got 62 arc seconds more than 180 degrees. Uh, mm -hmm. This uh, this is from a particular book called The Transcontinental Triangulation of the American Arc of the Parallel, and I can send you a link to that. This has page after page after page of measured triangles, all of them with more than 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so something that is not... Uh, not possible on a flat surface, yet every single measurement is more than 180 degrees. Yeah, yeah I'd so, like to look further into that one. Yeah, yeah. just so need someone to I can, present that to the debate board and, yep. and I can open up the magnifying glass so, on that and, and really examine it. Yeah. So uh, uh, the question, uh, question is, um, you know, you, you probably have looked at this before but you know there's a flight uh, that that goes regularly from sydney australia here all the way over to santiago chile mm -hmm. right and uh it goes this way it goes south near near antarctica and then back up it typically goes south of new zealand as it comes back uh it doesn't go no, it doesn't go across North America. Do you have any uh, explanation for that? plane flights on my board here about how plane flights, and they make total sense when you understand the jet streams here. And Nevins, you're more than welcome to investigate that and, and see so that would, the flight it, The jet streams, jet, jet streams make them go three to four times faster? 
you, you definitely have to see it. You've got to see it. I've got great articles that talk about just how much uh, a jet stream is able to help. Uh, a, a plane. Three to four times. Can faster. I ask a question? Yeah. So do jet and so do jet streams make um, seismic waves travel three to four times faster, or um, tsunamis? I don't know why. Because stream, because because the because the travel times for we can we know the velocity of seismic waves and we know the velocity of tsunamis and we can measure the time that it takes a um, tsunami or a seismic wave to get from one point on Earth's surface to the other. Um, and we can use that to estimate the distance between the, to calculate the distance between those points. And what we get is that those distances are always consistent with the spherical distance, just like the plane travel times are consistent. So if you're blaming the, if you're blaming the jet stream for the plane travel times, I want to know what the physical mechanism is that makes tsunamis and seismic waves travel at four times their velocity, bearing in mind that it is actually impossible for seismic waves to travel at four times their velocity, because that would um, that is not um, something that solids are capable of supporting. All right. Here's an article from the Washington Post that talks about uh, jet streams helping. Uh, that wasn't my question, and I would I'm like sorry. you to address my question. I'm sorry. Um, your question was concerning jet streams, and you feel like a jet no, stream. No, uh, what I'm suggesting here is that if you're going to it, let us accept your explanation for how planes get there, OK? Planes are in the air. There's jet streams in the air. Jet streams can help the planes get there. Why do seismic waves and um, uh, seismic waves and tsunamis or that different. aren't in the atmosphere why did they get there in a time consistent with um, spherical distances? There's no jet stream that can um, accelerate them. So how do they manage to travel the vast distances that you claim they, they travel in less time? I'd have to look more into the thing. I don't know. I don't have enough observations to really go off of to make yeah. it really educated. So, so yeah. And I mean, this is the point where this is the point where actually there are tens of thousands of seismic events and we've analyzed every single one of them. And we can, we can look at earthquakes that are very close to Antarctica, for instance. Um, now, the typical flat earth, uh, flat earth geometry is that Antarctica is the edge of the world. Um, but we see that um, seismic waves travel from one side of Antarctica to the other side of Antarctica very, very rapidly, um, mm -hmm. which in flat earth terms means that they're going from one side of the earth to the exact opposite side of the earth more rapidly than they get to any of the center of the disc. So mm -hmm. they manage to travel from one point over here to one point over here without going through that. And in order to, in order to reconcile that, you would need them to be going around the edges at something like um, uh, seven times the speed of sound in the solid, something like that. Yeah, yeah. You, you need them to be traveling at enormous velocities. And um, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. Similarly with tsunamis, you know, we can, we can calculate the time it takes for a tsunami to get from the point where the earthquake was to the point where the tsunami hits. We can calculate that time and we know the velocity of tsunamis. And every time we do it, we get that the distance between the source and the point where the tsunami hit agrees exactly with the spherical distance formula. Well, not exactly, but very, very closely with the spherical distance formula. It's the, and, and these are processes, it, these are processes that can't be um, explained by, um, uh, explained by um, jet streams. And so invoking jet streams, you know, well, but, yeah, but you're invoking jet streams to explain planes. Yes. Um, because planes but, are in the but, sky, hold in on. the jet let, let, yes, Let's just be clear yes, here. But it, just, just to add something, your article, I looked at your article, it claimed that the airplane went 801 miles an hour. Um, you would need to go at least two and a half times the regular airplane speed of 500 in order to make it happen. If if you use the flat Earth uh, as a, as a muffle equidistant map, which 
which doesn't work because we do know that it, it travels south. Um, that's been confirmed. So you need to go three or four times as fast. So 800 miles an hour isn't enough. You'd need to go 2,000 miles an hour. Okay. So, uh, well, so let me, let me deconstruct this for you. We've got one observation that you claim is correct, um, but is actually disputable. Um, uh, and our claim is that, well, actually the distances agree with the spherical Earth. And then we've got, in addition, we've got the time it takes boats to travel from one place to another, the time it takes cars to drive across continents, the time it takes for tsunamis to travel across the ocean, the time it takes for seismic waves to travel inside the Earth. We've got multiple independent observations that are all consistent with the angular distance between two, point, two points on Earth's surface um, uh, being correctly calculated on a sphere. If you give me the latitude and longitude of any two points on Earth's surface, um, I can give you a really good approximation of the distance between them. Really good. Okay. Um, and I can do it reliably and I can use that to calculate how long it'll take a seismic wave to travel between the two points, how long it will take a tsunami if they're both on the coast and you know, um, one is tsunamigenic. Um, I can do all of these calculations and they all turn out to be right. Um, and you've got this piecemeal, you've got a piecemeal argument as to why planes might be able to do it that doesn't cover any of the other observations. And so, very different than all the other observations. Yes, but um, but um, but this is an example of pseudoscience, right? What you're requiring is that instead of the cause of these observations being the same, which is to say that the distance is as described by the spherical distance formula, you know, that's the single cause. We ascribe the fact that all of this happens to the same mechanism, which is to say we had the distances right. That's why all of these things agree with it. And you're saying, well, um, for planes, it's the jet stream. And for these other things, I don't know yet. But there'll be another five mechanisms to explain these other five, um, uh, other five uh, uh, coincidental, coincidental um, uh, observations. And that's not how science works. Science doesn't work by proliferating the, um, uh, the questions. Science works by finding the answer that most accurately accords with what we can observe. Um, and, you know, you can't even, even appealing to jet streams, when you look at that answer, it doesn't actually explain the observation. The jet stream argument is at best a notional one. It doesn't match the mathematics. And, and I mean... Well, you further, know, further, if I can add, this, uh, it only explains, only attempts to explain one direction. Uh, the the flight goes the same over the same uh, uh, very nearly same path both directions, um, and does the does the jet stream turn turn around when they're going the other direction? No, it doesn't. So it it doesn't even come. The jet stream answer doesn't even come close to answering it. Okay, right. I'd like to see that one presented on the boards here. I just presented it now. I mean, the jet streams don't go both directions simultaneously in the same location, right? The the, the plane goes one way and you're suggesting it's going four to five times the, its ground, you know, its maximum speed from a jet stream, but your citation doesn't support yeah. that. And, and it goes the other direction at four to five times the maximum airspeed of that plane in the other direction in the same yeah. vicinity. It doesn't answer anything. It doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't need to be on the board. You can throw it away. It doesn't answer a thing. It, it does also answer. does it. It it does well. Allow me to allow me to answer some other. Allow me to ask some other questions. So I, how I mean, is it? Time right now. We've been going for yeah. Two, it's it's three hours yeah. now. So, yeah, I'm really you, impressed with time right now. We've got a, one we've last point. Up here. There are there are jet streams in the northern hemisphere too. So if you're going to invoke them to change the travel times in the Southern Hemisphere, you need to explain why they don't have such dramatic effects in the Northern Hemisphere. They very much do have dramatic effects. In no, the they don't you have know, such dramatic the, effects in the Northern in Hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere and in the Southern Hemisphere, and they both make a big significant impact. 
significant is significant is different from four to five times faster you're claiming that they're four to five times faster in the southern hemisphere in order to cover the distance required um you know and and really now you are seeming obstructionist right um i've presented multiple sources of data that all support the conclusion that the spherical distance formula is correct and you're fixated on the fact that um, on the fact that um, jet streams explain planes, which they don't. Um, and it is a and it is, you are simply asserting it, and you have presented no evidence other than jet streams exist. And uh, an article I saw apparently I interpreted as increasing the the velocity, the well, the speed of planes by a factor of five, when in fact the article claimed that there was a you know what a 60% increase in the speed of the plane that's not sufficient um, you haven't explained how um, how the jet streams are as strong going um, west to east as they are going east to west which is a necessary component of your model um, uh, and you know you, you just you, rather than recognizing that there are some significant um, uh, methodological flaws in what you're presenting um, you're just getting strident. No, sorry, um, I went on too long. <laughs> All right, uh, I, we, we, I, I, I want to respect your. I want to respect your time, Kyle. Um, so if I could, if just a couple more things, and and then uh, no no new super chats for for Kyle, please. Um, uh, Hugh Jars has a has a pretty funny one. He says, "If you ate yourself, would you be twice as big, or disappear completely?" Uh, <laughs> Uh, Alyssum uh, gives a, a DOI link to a, uh, a publication, and I and I sent it to you. Um, the publication is, uh, and he says that uh, we can even detect the wobble of the Earth. Um, and so the the publication is how to detect the Chandler and annual wobble of the Earth with a ring laser gyroscope. So I sent that to you, Kyle. Um, Lael is here, sad. Let's see. I post all these things on your last video and you've removed the post. Why? And this is one of the things I think he posted. Kyle, the book of Abraham clearly teaches in facsimile 2 that Earth at one time revolved around the residence of God. Why would this change if the planet fell? We can't get to the end of that. Um, oh, man, I would love to talk about the book of but, Abraham. There's some but great things. I, about the pillars of the earth and the foundations and all those kinds of things. Yeah, I'd love I, to talk about that. I think it'd mind. be great if if you have removed them from your video, then maybe don't do that. If it's something that um, YouTube did because YouTube will block links automatically, maybe you could approve them and uh, engage in a conversation with Lael. I think he's very interested in this topic for you there. He's more than welcome. I, I really, really would love it if he came over to our, our debate board. I've got a whole talk or whole section there for about religious discussions. And it's, yeah, if he wants to bring it in about flat earth. Great. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd yeah. love to have him. I will I don't see enough people over there in the religious section of uh, of the debate board. So but, I sent yeah. Lael. Someone um, to talk about the book of Abraham would, would just tickle me to death. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, all right. So if you need to go, um, okay. That that's yeah. thank you very I, much. I Kyle. wish I had more. It, it's it's been yeah, great I having you. Wish. I appreciate uh, your time. Um, so uh, thank you for that. Um, so if you got to go, I, I I'm going to keep going here for just yeah, a little bit longer. Um, yeah, I just want to say um, I just barely had a little bit of words at all to say about the jet streams. You know, you got the tip of the iceberg there, and because I said something that you weren't expecting, or I'm not really sure exactly what it was. Uh, you were expecting something different than the, what I said. And I don't know if there was something more, I feel like you were disappointed because I didn't have I think, to say, but yeah. you were doing all the talking. I barely got to say anything about mm -hmm. my explanation. And uh, so I'm uh, sorry if I came across as objectionable or anything like that, but I just didn't have, much okay. room to say any explanation whatsoever you were doing all the talking there so yeah yeah I, I get like that when i feel like um uh i have said something that ought to have been learned from that hasn't been learned from um and uh, uh it 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 can frustrate me um, i understand how that um, can happen. So, okay anyway yeah. thank you for a conversation uh I really enjoyed talking to you 
Okay. Yeah. Please come check out the debate board and that way we can talk about things much more in depth. There's no time limits okay. there or anything like that. And we can share illustrations and all the articles we want and everything else. It's yeah. I, there's no, that's the beauty of the, the, the board is it totally gets rid of all shotgun argumentation. There's room for all of it. And there's, yeah, it's beautiful. I've posted a link to that board okay. in the description. Uh, so people can uh, can come on there, be nice people. Okay. Uh, Kyle is nice, and I think that uh, that he deserves that uh, that kind of respect there. So now there's a lot of my comments that that end up getting edited or out or that just don't reach it on uh, my typical YouTube channel, but that is not the case on the board. All comments are very very open on the board. So yeah, please if you want to say something, that's the place to say it. So. Yeah, I got to go going here, uh, but thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Okay. And so uh, we've got a couple uh, super chats here to uh, to read. Got to fix fix this here so we see. Oh, I know how to do that. Don't want to see me. There we go. We want to see PhD Tony. There we go. So um, let's see, a couple super chats. I did, I loved Hugh Jars's. If you ate yourself, would you be twice as big or disappear completely? What do you think, Tony? <laughs> I, I, I am str uh, struggling, struggling to even contemplate it. Um, uh, knowing me, I, I don't think I'm very healthy. I think I'd be twice as big. <laughs> yeah, what would happen if you had a, uh, um, you know, the, the, some of the, in the, the the fantasy realms they have the the bag that you can that's I infinitely large on the inside. <laughs> what would happen if you turned it inside out? Um, who knows? Well, effectively, it'd be the same thing, right? I don't know. Except you'd be on the inside of the bag. For, imagine a universe that's inside the bag. There, it's an infinitely big bag. Oh, there's a universe inside there. From their perspective, you're in the bag. That's yep. There you go. That's too deep. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lael is here. Is uh, did you see my link in Discord? So yeah, um, Lael, I did, um, and I sent that on. So I just want to make sure. Um, seems like Lael and uh, Kyle have a little bit of a have have history. some uh, history. Yeah. So General E. Shady responding to Golden Brisket says depends on how many pancakes in it. Uh, okay. And that was the non-Euclidean non triangle question that cannot be answered. <laughs> okay. So uh, Alyssum gave a DOI link uh, for that Chandler wobble, and that is on that is on my um, mc2.net slash spin mm -hmm. page, uh, which has uh, 13 measurements of the rotation of the Earth that flat earthers love to just yeah. -uh, um, <clears throat> for no good reason. So let's see. Uh, Stringer News 1 says, if I made a call from New York to L.A., what undersea cable would that call use? I believe it would use an underground cable mostly. Probably these days it would be a fiber. Right? I don't know if that if that was... Uh, I mean, there's lots of fibers all across uh, the United States. Yes, there are. Yeah, um, I don't and, know. And a large amount of telephone traffic is done over uh, VP, uh, uh, private networks, certainly. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe some are on the the main internet on uh, encrypted packet uh, channels. So, Alyssum says Haversine formula Haversine works, yet no FE version of it exists. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, that's right. You just, I mean, that's the. Yeah, the, the the math to figure the distance on the on this um, yeah. surface of a sphere, and and yeah, I mean, if the Earth were flat in a disk like the AE map, then you'd have um, it just be two D math basically. But uh, nope. Yeah, you'd think it would be simple, right? It well, if, if it's it, if it, it's, it, it would right. be polar coordinates. Which I don't think very many flat earthers could handle. 
Yeah. Oh, they. Yeah, they're prepared to say that the they're pre they're prepared to say that the um that the azimuthal equidistance. Some of them say that it's uh, AE is correct, um, whereas others yeah. of them say, well, it's we, not really correct. They say we need don't some. need to have but a map. Of course you do. It's the only it's the only map projection from the that gets the distance from the North Pole right. Um, you know, at least it gets one distance right. The distance of any point to the North Pole on a on an AE map is correct. Um, so there you go. That's at least a step in the right direction. But it's the only map that does that. So. Yep. They're stuck with it. <laughs> they they got nothing. That's the problem. And, and when they say mm -hmm. we don't need a map, like, yeah, you you do need a map. You really do. You really do. They're handy for all sorts of things. Because if, if the ancient times, right, you did not need a map that was accurate because people didn't do international navigation. But we, I mean, these these flights happen. You know, the, these, these yeah, aren't just... That's right. I did choose points that were specifically at the right places to have exactly 90 degrees on each intersection. But it mm -hmm. was very close to Johannesburg, very close to Hong Kong, and very close to Iceland. And there, mm -hmm. there is a flight from Johannesburg to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Iceland, and Iceland to... Um, at, no, not, I'm sorry, not Iceland. London, Heathrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Not Iceland, uh, and then to Johannesburg, and it adds up to two hundred and sixty-three degrees, not two hundred and seventy degrees. But that still doesn't mm -hmm. work on a flat Earth. It's still yep. more than one hundred eighty uh, by a big stretch. <laughs> exactly. It's a. Uh, uh, it, I don't know where they even begin with this idea, but it. Anyway. Mm -hmm. It's, and you, how you manage to how you manage to say stay so calm and cheerful through it all um, for Will this week? Uh, you know, I I look at it like I I want I want them to say the most ridiculous things, such that if somebody walks along and watches this, says that's a dumb idea. I would never agree with Flat Earth. <laughs> and if that's happening, then I'm accomplishing my goal and. I don't need exactly. to get excited about it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I'm going to be doing an after show because Keith, um, Keith Ivan Mitchell has asked to come on. So I'm going to do that in just a minute here in okay. a separate stream so that these, the debate can be separate. Okay. Um, a one more super chat. Alyssum says, can I trade him against Vlad? Um, and yeah. If I missed, uh, he anybody, if been... I missed, let me, let me know that I missed. Um, I have Vlad's email address. <laughs> um, uh, he was really thoroughly objectionable. Um, uh, last I, night. Oh yes. I, I don't think I don't think he should be given airtime after that sort of display. Um, just thoroughly. Uh, and I realize that puts people in a difficult position because, as I was saying earlier, a lot of them do have quite objectionable. Um, uh, uh, belief systems um, and if you start banning all the flat earthers who are in some way objectionable you won't have any left you don't have any yeah. um, but anyway yeah <laughs> Clive says just debate a blobfish instead that would be a good point uh, all right well thank you everybody if you um, if you have not already subscribed please uh, do that now not please do that do it right now <laughs> hit the bell Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever. And uh, let me know all about what you thought about Kyle. And, you know, Kyle was nice. Let's let's return him the favor. So uh, thanks to Tony. Thank and we'll see you again, everybody here in just a minute. Bye. Take care.